Hey, we'll go over it again one more time. For Oklahoma, I think it's as simple as stopping Darren Sproles. They have got to contain Sproles, not let him get loose. He's playing here at home in his comfort zone. Again, he's only had success against some of the also rans that K-State's gone up against this year in Northeast Louisiana and Western Kentucky. So Oklahoma has to contain him the way they contained Cedric Benson last week. They also have to contain the crowd. They can't let Kansas State get off to a hot start and let this really noisy, loud, boisterous crowd get into the ball game. Tracy, if they can take that away, I think that they will have a lot of success and also run all day. Simple as that. Hand the ball to Adrian Peterson and get out of the way. I know if I was a quarterback, I just uh, I have one play, hand it to 28 and let him go. <laughs> and I think Peterson last week it was so slippery on that field in the Cotton Bowl that he wasn't able to use that sweet play where Oklahoma can get those blocks from the outside receivers and also J.D. Runnels. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, this is a great day for football today. Oh, Dry field. I think um, Adrian's going to have a big day today. I really believe that. Over the 1,000-yard mark, does he get his 229? I think he gets his 229 today. All right. I, and so after the 1,000-yard mark, sixth game of the season, that's, that's unbelievable for a freshman. All right, around the rest of college football today, some big games. Texas taking on Missouri. Who do you like in that contest, Trace? I like Texas. Um, Texas has a great football team, and um, I just think that they're more complete, um, and I think they'll win. Yeah, I, Texas has always played well after the Oklahoma loss. Mac Brown did say in the Dallas Morning News earlier this week that it was the most physical football game that he has ever coached trying to get his players to bounce hey, back from that loss Sooners, to uh, what about the Sooners <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of fans that are excited ready to go in the game but the most physical game that Texas had played in, he said it's tougher this year to get his guys going again I mean as much maligned as Mac Brown is you got to give him credit for getting his guys back up off the floor after losing OU yeah I agree and just the mental psyche you know it's tough you know losing to Oklahoma in five years in a row but Mac Brown's a very good coach and I think he'll get it turned around they've got great athletes and I think they'll be fine again um, they're a complete team you know they just got beat by Oklahoma which is a really really good team and that's nothing to be ashamed of yeah no no question about it USC taking on Arizona State today we talked about that a little bit earlier on in the show and it's an Arizona State team with Dirk Cutter that last year was picked to be among the elite in the Pac-10 and they did not really live up to their expectations and so they've turned it around this year behind Andrew Walter he's 15 inter or 15 touchdowns to just one interception USC Tracy the defense has not been there like it was a year ago yeah I agree I'm just wondering how many lifelines that um, USC has because clearly they should have got beat by Cal um, uh, last week but you know what um, Arizona State's a really good ball club and I'm picking Arizona State to upset USC uh, the upset huh upset. That's all, upset all, all right that's pretty good hey, you know and I think last year so many fans thought that it might be an OU USC showdown I think everybody's rooting against USC that's an Oklahoma fan so hey Tracy we appreciate your time great job today we're looking forward to a great game and uh, enjoy it here on KOCO the Missouri and Texas and we'll have great coverage tonight Chris Callahan in Stillwater and then uh, I'll be back in studio tonight at 10 for Tracy I'm Mark and we'll send you out with a little musical look back at the 2000 Oklahoma K-State game Another great weekend of college football here on ABC. Welcome to Manhattan, Kansas, a spectacular fall day. And the number two team in the nation is on hand here to take on Kansas State. Oklahoma, the team that got upset by Kansas State last year in the Big 12 championship game. Will it happen again? We're going to find out college football, and we're off to New York. They're halfway home, but the question is, who's going to make it to the winner's circle? Will the top-rated Trojans continue to show their championship pedigree as they make the turn for home against unbeaten Arizona State? Can the Longhorns regain their stride after coming up short in their high-stakes duel a week ago? After stumbling out of the gate, will it be NC State or Maryland who keeps their long-shot hopes alive in their conference chase? Will Iowa or Ohio State show that closing kick to come from off the pace in the run for the roast? And from around the outside, will Kansas State once again derail Oklahoma's wire-to-wire -wire attempt at a national 
national championship run. It's the race we've been waiting for. And down the stretch they come. Welcome to the Ford pregame. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor with you here. Very important matchup for Oklahoma. Why? Last year they were rolling. Then they got Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game, and the season was just about done. Yeah, you know what? Why even play this game? You know what? Oklahoma's so that gum good. Why are they even going out and teeing the football up? Let me tell you what happened in the Big 12 championship game last year. That was Mr. Darren Sproles, 235 yards against that great Sooners defense. Sproles, though, this season, the offense isn't the same. It's a different team. It's a much different team. My friend, that's why revenge, revenge is not on the mind of the Sooners right now. They're just worried about winning a game. Well, Craig, a wise man once said, <laughs> you cannot get ahead while getting even. So what Oklahoma needs to do is focus on the task at hand. The game at hand. Today they have Kansas State run the football. Hand it to Adrian Peterson. Run left, run right, convert third downs, keep your defense off the field, and score some points. That is the way Oklahoma is going to win. This is a thing that they missed last year, the running game. Adrian Peterson Let's brings move. that demand. Uh, that smooth head of yours biddy, works biddy, perfectly. Biddy, biddy. That smooth head up there with that wise man. We <laughs> shall return with more in a moment. <laughs> Kansas State facing Oklahoma. A big one in the Big 12. We will see you at halftime. It's coming up next. Welcome back, everybody, as we are set to go with the number two team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners taking on the Kansas State Wildcats. Over 50,000 will be on hand. Gary Thornhead, Cunningham, great to have you with us. And today, a treat. We are going to see two of the top ten rushers in the nation on the field today. Most of us knew about Darren Sproles last year. The one we didn't know about was Adrian Peterson, of course, everybody in Texas now knows about him. They knew about him last February when he got away in the recruiting wars. 225 yards. He has raced to the top of the heap in the Heisman race has completely changed the Oklahoma offense. Much more difficult to defend because of their balance. Now for Darren Sproles, it's been an up and down year. He still leads the nation in all purpose yards like he did last year, but he has had a case of the dropsies. He's buffed a couple of punts and had six fumbles. He cannot put the ball on the turf today if Kansas State's going to have any chance against Oklahoma. Kansas State, the big upset in the Big 12 championship game last year. They beat Oklahoma. Does it have an impact on today's game? Jim Gray. Well, Gary, not according to Bob Stoops. I spoke to him and he said, absolutely not. Revenge is not a factor at all. He said, that would be very arrogant to speak of revenge. That would be saying that Kansas State didn't have a right to beat us. Not only did they have a right, they kicked us pretty good. Said we have a heightened awareness, a heightened focus, and our preparation is heightened. But we're not mad. We're not mad at all because we're not looking back. We're looking forward to this year's Big 12 championship. Gary? All right, Jim, thanks very much. We'll see whether or not that holds true. This is a very good Oklahoma team. And when we come back, it is really a treat today to have last year's Heisman Trophy winner on hand. That is Jason White of Oklahoma. But he's got a 19-year-old in the backfield with him who just may win the Heisman this year. We'll talk about it. For Oklahoma, is there a national championship in their immediate future? Bob Stoops has every reason to believe that. He doesn't want to talk about it. His sixth season there, great record, 60 and 11 and 3 and 1 against Kansas State. And the pupil going against the teacher used to work. A lot of head coaches used to work under Bill Snyder but in the early 90s. Bob Stoops was his co-defensive coordinator and then of course went to great success at the University of Florida. There you see the numbers 16 seasons for Bill Snyder here and at home 83 11 and 1 since 90. This has been a tough place to play because this has been a very good Kansas State team. And really for Oklahoma the first true road game the only game they played away from Oklahoma was the game in Dallas last week a neutral field and all the coaches say this might be the loudest place in the Big 12 to play. All right Heisman Trophy winner. Yes Jason White. He is a senior. He is the quarterback for Oklahoma and last year this was his moment as he received the award and spoke to the members of the press More importantly on him. is no this is not just my trophy. It's the Oklahoma Sooners. You don't get many who come back after winning the Heisman to play again. And he came back for his sixth year. He was granted it right before the Sugar Bowl last year. And trust me, he is not. He's here to win a ring. Kansas State defers. And the kickoff will go to Oklahoma. It'll be played by Bradley back inside the 10, up to the 15-yard line. And right away, Rankins is taken down. 
And right away, let me say one thing for Kansas State. Their specialty teams have been a disaster. Chalk up an early one <laughs> yes, for Kansas State. Absolutely. On good coverage on the kickoff. Let's take a look at what we're going to see at quarterback after that nine-yard return as the Sooners will go to work. 6'3", 226-pound senior. That is Jason White. That is the Heisman Trophy winner. And everybody talks about the diversity that Oklahoma now has in their offense with the running game. But don't go to sleep on this guy. Don't forget he still has Mark Clayton. He still has Will Peoples. He still has great specialists on the outside. 28, Adam Peterson is the big young runner we'll be looking at. They work out of the shotgun straight ahead. Not a lot of large there. A one-yard gain. Tackle made by Marvin Simmons, a junior. Take a look at these backs and receivers. Peterson's the youngster. Outback Steakhouse brings him to you. And the offensive line for Oklahoma, every single one of these guys has started 20 or more games in their career. This is really the heart and soul of this entire team. They will push the defense around up front, force the linebackers to have to make tackles. Brandon Jones, Travis Wilson, three receivers in there now, and a second down N9 out of the shotgun. White looking to the flats at the 20-yard line and driven out of bounds at about the 23. Travis Wilson, a junior, a five-yard gain, but not enough for a first down. What a test today Kansas State has our Outback Steakhouse look at the defensive line. And this defensive line, Scott Edmonds, is the guy who comes off the edge with the pressure. They'll need him here. The linebacker's been a little banged around. You're going to see a bunch of different guys. And in the secondary, Cedric Williams is the corner that will be playing on Sunday. Some days he will be up in the face of Mark Clayton a lot this afternoon. So our first uh, big third down play comes here. Oklahoma's got the football. It is going to be a third down and four. Ball is spotted at the 22. White again out of the shotgun. And that'll be incomplete. At the 30-yard line, Brandon Jones, the intended receiver, and Kansas State jumping around. Listen, folks, we're going to tell you something right now. We came in here and listened to Kansas State players, coaches, and fans downgrade this team all week, that this club's not very good, it can't play very well, and it's not played well this year. So these players have been challenged. And they have to feed off the energy that's in this building right now. That was a nice three and out to start it. And the first punt of the game will come back from about the 10-yard line. Blake Ferguson will be doing the kicking. Figures is back for Kansas State at his own 40, and he's going to take it and wants to return. He gets hog tied right there by Mark Bradley, who is standing next to him. A 38-yard kick and no return. Now we're going to take a look at the offense for Kansas State. Can he get it done today? Well, last week against Kansas, he didn't answer the bell. He has a shoulder injury that dates back to high school. He heard it earlier in the year. Didn't feel like he could go. There was hesitation in his eyes when Bill Snyder asked him if he was ready to start. So they started Allen Webb instead. He begged and pleaded to get in the second half. Threw for 249 yards against Kansas in the second half. A little too, little too late. But he's going to have to be awfully efficient today. First down and 10. Let's see if they go to the passing game early. Sproles is in the backfield. Sproles, a Heisman candidate, start of the year. Acting as a blocker into the flats. That's going to be maybe back for a three-yard gain. Figures, the reception, Eric Bassey, a junior on the hit. Outback Steakhouse takes a look at the backs and receivers. And Brian Casey, a 6'7 tight end, will be running down the middle of the field a lot to pull people with him and open up the outsides. Marrera and Figures, both two talented young players. And this offensive line so very different from last year. Mike Johnson moves over from the guard into the center. They're still trying to find a little bit of that swagger that they had at the end of last season. Second down and a seven. Again, both teams working out of the shotgun early in this game. Big gaps in that line. Quick out pass incomplete. The receiver never got turned around. Davin Dennis out there on the left side of midfield. That pass is there with his back still to the quarterback. They got the third down. Defensively, this Oklahoma team can hold you down. And Lynn McGruder played as good a defensive tackle game has been played in the Stoops era, according to the coaches. Linebackers again, like Kansas State, are going to see a bunch of guys in there. Gayron Allen will see a lot of time. And on the back end, this defense is so aggressive. But let's not overlook Antonio Perkins out three to four weeks. Anya going to get you is in there at the corner for him, and this is a very talented Juco transfer. This is going to be a third down and seven. Call being made. Time running out. Two seconds on the clock. They get the snap off with a second left to go. Quick slant in up to midfield, and that's going to be it up for a first down. Tony Madison, there's a flag down. Madison has caught two touchdown passes. 
Picks up eight yards, but let's check the penalty. And right away, you kind of see what Dell Miller, Greg Peterson, the two co-OCs, and of course Bill Snyder, who calls his own plays. They just tell him from the booth what they see. They want to get Dylan Meyer throwing the ball in three-step drops. Earlier, we saw Davin Dennis. He was supposed to run an outcut, but missed the call, obviously. That time, a little wide receiver screen. They don't want this pressure early to get to a quarterback who's not quite 100% healthy. That was offside on Oklahoma, so they get the first down at the 49-yard line as they have moved into Sooners territory. Three receivers are split. Meyer, the sophomore quarterback, will hand that one off. Sproles trying to go straight ahead. It's over. And he's got a gain of a couple of yards on that one as Rufus Alexander puts the hit on. Take a look at Bill Snyder. What do you do after you've had big losses trying to get your team back up and into a game? The most important thing to us, I think, is still, you know, in this ball game, is to exhibit those characteristics that we play with a passion, that we play hard, and, you know, that we try to hold mistakes to a minimum so our execution is good. But I think the spirit uh, and the character with which we play this game really is the most important thing for our program right now. Second down and eight. Character, the key word there. The fake. Meyer looking deep, going into the corner at the 10-yard line, down near the goal line. Caught! Incomplete! Incomplete! Out of bounds! Davin Dennis, a junior wide receiver, with Clint Ingram on him all the way downfield, and Eric Bassey there. And it's incomplete at the two-yard line. And Eric Bassey does a great job of getting his head around to find this ball right at the last moment. Davin, Davin Dennis is going to make this catch out of bounds. Now, remember, there is a major difference between college and the NFL on a play like this. In the NFL, if they thought that Eric Bassey forced him out of bounds, they could call that a touchdown. In college football, he's out of bounds regardless of how he got there. It is a third down and eight. Ball at the 47-yard line. Third down conversions. They're 42% this year. Add another over the middle. That'll be a first down as they get it down to the 35. Morea. Jermaine Maria out of Palm Beach, Florida, 12-yard reception. He's been a primary target this year. And Dylan Meyer looks good. You know, he had that shoulder. He had surgery in high school. He has such a great command of this offense. The coaches say as good as any player that they've ever had at Kansas State. And a very young guy, only a sophomore. But he checks in and out of plays all the time. And right now, I really like the play calls by Bill Snyder. Get it out of his hands quickly. Three receivers near side. First down and 10. Kansas State's caught with fire. Sproles on the carry out of the backfield as they try and gap that Oklahoma linebacker front four. It'll be a four-yard gain. Lynn Magruder, the senior, who had his best game, according to his coach last week, put the hit on. But I, and, and, you know, I take Bob Stoops at his word that this young man had the best game that he's since he's been there. But you cannot overlook the fact that Dusty Dvorak is no longer a member of this team. Was kicked off before the Oregon game for some transgressions off the field. They don't have as much depth at defensive tackle, and he was by far their best player. Right now, they're being controlled in the middle. Second down and six ball at the 31-yard line. Kansas State moving it. Rolls again on the carry, and he'll be taken down for after a yard gain at the 30. Rufus Alexander on the hit, and we'll check in with Jim Gray. Jim. Gary, you guys have been talking about what Bob Stoops said about Lynn Magruder having the best game that he has seen from a defensive tackle since he's been here. Magruder was told that. He said it feels pretty good, but I've always been taught that a pat on the back is not too far away from a kick in the butt. <laughs> so I'm going to take it all with a grain of salt. I love that. <laughs> yeah, trust me. Coach Stoops will give you a swift kick uh, if you come out and play worse than you did the week before. Great response. Third down. Third down at five. They are two for two on third down so far in this drive out of the shotgun. Meyer looking over the middle. That one's down at the five. Complete and near the one-yard line. Morera on the reception and a 29-yard gain in Kansas State. The team that upset Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship last year is within a yard of a touchdown. And this is a great read by Dylan Meyer. Watch Lance Mitchell, Mitchell the linebacker that side. He's going to stop dropping into coverage. He doesn't take the proper angle because he took his eye off the Morera. It's tough in zone. You have to go between the receiver and the quarterback. And Mitchell didn't get enough depth. And Dylan Meyer throws a great touch pass. Sproles is in the backfield. They are leading rusher. As they go for the touchdown from the one. That's Sproles looking for room. He's hit right at the one. Boy, a tremendous stand-up tackle right there. As Pleasant moved in and put the hit on Demario. 
Got a great shot on him and stood him up. There's nothing pleasant about that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it looked like Sproles, who is much stronger than you would think at his size. Five, six and a half, five, seven, about a buck 85, but pleasant with a really nice form tackle. Maybe a little play action here. 43, a little bit of a fake toss, and let Meyer, who can run, get on the edge. The 11th play of this series. Saab has come on to play here as they get some beef up front. Sproles still in the backfield, trying it again. Touchdown! Joe Ram is on to put the kick up. Point after 15 out of 15 on the season for Kansas State. Ball down and it is up and it is good. 11 plays, 59 yards. They went three for three on third down conversions. It took 438. Sproles took it in. Kansas State up. Sproles gets his third touchdown of the season. There's a Tremendous first offensive attack for Kansas State. Could not have gone better. And Darren Sproles and L. Roberson now tied for career total touchdowns. That's actually getting the ball into the end zone, not throwing it. Obviously, Roberson would be well ahead in that category. But keep in mind, this Oklahoma defense is sixth in the nation starting the day on point surrender. Unbelievable drive. Dylan Meyer was four for six, and the only incompletions was when Davin Dennis didn't get that it was an outcut. And he threw a nice ball down the field that Eric Bassey just made a better play on defensively. Reams ready to go on the kickoff. As Oklahoma will get it again over near the sideline. Ball will be taken at the seven by Rankins. 20. And there he's taken down on a good shoestring tackle. I mean, he got all of him on that one. That was Saba. 12-yard return. Jim Gray. Well, Gary, Darren Sproles before the season was looked upon as a Heisman Trophy candidate. He's had six fumbles in just one 100-yard game. But in the Oklahoma paper this week, there was a line that said his, his Heisman campaign was about the same, had about the same chance as Ralph Nader getting into the White House. And he took exception to that. He said, I got a better chance at the Heisman than that guy will ever see the White House. And I guess he maybe proved it a little bit on that first drive. Yeah, but Darren Sproles could take some votes away from some guys at the top <laughs> if he has a great game today, just like Nader. First down Gary. and 10, ball at the 20-yard line. There's oh. out of bounds, and there is Adrian Peterson. That is the 19-year-old. And there you see why he has piled up consecutive 100-yard games in his first five plays. And this is exactly the type of run that Bob Elliott, the, the defensive coordinator at Kansas State, told us about yesterday. He runs right at you. When he gets into the open field, he absolutely tattooed Brandon Archer, the linebacker, who goes 225 pounds. This young man just runs with a purpose on every single down. He is from Palestine, Texas. Second down and a three. He's in the backfield, straight up, and you can believe the whole Kansas State defense is on him. They will stop him. A yard loss. Marceau, Derek Marceau moved in on the hit. Tomorrow, join ABC Sports, some of the PGA Tour's best. Tee off for the final round of the Chrysler Classic of Greensboro. Live coverage at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on ABC. Well, I would expect Kansas State to tee off here with a blitz. Bob Elliott is not much of a blitz guy, but this third medium, you do not want... Jason White, who is one of the most efficient quarterbacks all time in college football, to be able to look at this defense for very long. Third down and five from the 24-yard line. They fake the pass, go to Peterson up the middle, and he is not going to get the first down. Wow. This Sooner offense running into Brandon Archer that time. It's going to bring up a fourth down. This team is 59% converting third and something this year. This is a this is exactly what Kansas State needed as a start. Two three and outs by their defense. A really nice, efficient drive offensively for seven points. And Bob Stoops knew this coming in. They, they didn't have to tell their players that Kansas State was going to come to play. So Oklahoma's going to have to punt it again. And uh, this kick will come back at about the 22-yard line when the foot is finally put in it. 
Blake Ferguson is back there to do the kicking for Oklahoma. Gets off a booming spiral. Figures is all the way back to the 17-yard line. 20 wants to go the other way. Team right, team left, and down. <laughs> That's a, it's an awfully quick group of white shirts. Will Peoples on the tackle. A 55-yard kick. Six return when we come back. Sproles is the name. Heisman was what he was after. Now it's just some solid, consistent ball games. The new co-defensive coordinator with Brent Venables is going to call a little bit more pressure on this one. Last time they only rushed four, no blitzing on rundowns. They cannot allow Sproles to get going downhill. 51 degree day, lots of sun, wind of very mild, sunny skies here. It'll be a first down and 10 balls at the 23 yard line. Again, they're going to work out of that shotgun and they've decided to pass. That's going to be incomplete near the first down marker. Tony Madison was the intended. And Darren Sproles, of course, this Oklahoma Sooner, Sooner defense remembers him all too well. 235 rushing yards. Make guys miss. Oklahoma always had a guy in the backfield, but he just had that ability. And once that guy missed, it just seemed a lot of man coverage by Oklahoma. 88 receiving yards. He treated Oklahoma like a redheaded rental car in that ball game. He's had five carries, eight yards and a touchdown. Sproles has on their first series. This is a second down at 10 at the 23. Little room, and that will bring it up to about the five yard gain for Victor Mann on the carry. And we're going to check back from that knee injury. We had a couple of wows. Three for three on third down so far. This is a third down and five. Ball at the 28 yard line. Meyer back out of that shotgun again, looking deep at the 40. And a great pass coverage incomplete. That one was pushed away. Anya Nagetcha. Uh, well, I I don't know. It looked like Davin Dennis, who had the metal mistake earlier, just let this ball get to his chest. I mean, Anya Nagetcha is long. He's six foot two inches, which is unusual for a cover corner. He might have gotten that left hand in there. But this is a fast ball by Dylan Meyer. Let's take a look. Uh, you got to catch that ball. Yeah. I mean, that's good coverage. He's on his inside hip. He's reaching in with his outside arm. Or excuse me, inside arm. But that's just got to be a grab. And uh, Rankins deep, and there's no flag as the punter got taken down, and a fair catch called for. Now the flag gets dropped. Well, it looked to me like the Oklahoma player was blocked. Although the blocker was blocked into the runner, it is a penalty by rule. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Wow. 15 yards. Brandon Jones was the man who got in there on the kicker. And initially, the official waved off any call, then realized that it's a required, an automatic call, and then threw the flag down. Let's take a look from the end zone. It is Brandon Jones who comes. He came off the flanker to come in, and he gets blocked there by, I believe it was Marcellius Cage, a running back, and Bob Stoop shaking his head. I, to me, I always thought you get blocked into the punter, that it's not a penalty, but apparently that's not the way they played here in the Big 12. You heard they say it's an automatic, yeah. automatic penalty, and there's a big call as it came on the punting situation. First down and 10, it moves the ball all the way up to the 43 yard line. Meyer looking near side, that'll be completed and uh, taken down at the point of catch about the 47. Ryan Casey, a senior who they really want to get into the offensive flow and believe it's important. Yeah, it, it, it's six foot seven. He's one of those guys who's fought some injuries and last week against Kansas they used him a lot down the middle of the field. It's so difficult even if you've got him covered. It's kind of like a power forward. He can just box you out. Gain four on that reception a second down and a six as they close in on midfield ball spotted at the 47 yard line. Then Meyer shouting out to his receivers Sproles moves over to the other side. Two receivers on that wild side. Big rushes on from the safeties. Gets hit, completed, and that'll be taken down inside the 35-yard line. He caught him in the blitz and went straight over the middle that time. Clint Ingram was charging and got a piece of the quarterback, but Casey caught the ball. And it's the old stand-up tight end like they used to run in Iowa. Here's Casey right here. Two are coming from the outside. Darren Sproles picks up one, but Dylan Meyer, again, remember, the coaches talked about his command of the offense. He knows a man is coming free. 
and you got full man coverage. The linebacker does not go over the top, and Dylan Meyer takes a hit and lands on his right shoulder. Appears to be okay, but that's just a great read by a young quarterback. Ball at the 34-yard line now. First and 10, Kansas State. They fake up the middle. He'll run it. Meyer looking, fakes, gets away, 25, and dives. Wow. Right now, Kansas State's offense has got Oklahoma chasing them. Well, Bill Snyder said that Dylan Meyer grew up right in front of his eyes last week. Did not feel well before the game. Did not feel like he could play. And as Kansas came out and put some scores on him and went ahead, he was begging to go back in the game. Gained a lot of respect, I think, from his teammates. And this is a guy that they have to have healthy. This is the guy that can run this offense, and he is faster than you suspect and more elusive as well. It's a first down and 10. They have moved it down to the 23-yard line of Oklahoma. He goes under center this time. Myers got two receivers, two in the backfield, looking at a quick pitch. Dangerous. Dangerous. That was close to being a fumble. Onion Agencia again there on the hit. Sproles on the carry. And boy, that one almost lost, and a flag is down on the play. Onion Agencia took a meandering route to end up at Oklahoma. Went to junior college originally. Face signed. Face. Five yards, number 22. Still wow. first down. Jesus. And Oklahoma just doing everything they can to try to be down 10 or 14 to nothing now. It's been Kansas State's that had the bad penalties coming into this game that have hurt them, but uh, not so far in this game as the penalties, key penalties, are being picked up by Oklahoma. It becomes a first down and five now and what would have been a loss on that play but for the penalty. You almost get a feeling that Bob Stoops should probably take a timeout. Settle this down. Yeah, it's almost like basketball. They are just on their heels and everything Bill Snyder is calling is working. First, and even thinks he's not calling. Yeah. Not working. First and five, ball on the 18-yard line. Two receivers, two in the backfield. Quick pitch. That's an option. Sproles wanted to throw. He had nowhere to go and a big rush put on. Oklahoma didn't give him a chance to either run or pass as it was Pendleton and Cody and a loss of six. Now why when the game is going so well do you suddenly revert to these kinds of risky players. Right. No I, I agree I, to me and, and that's the second mishandle of a pitch by Darren Sproles who struggled. Jim mentioned he's had six fumbles. He's also had two muffed punts. But to back up on that roughing we got a clarification if it is actual roughing not running into even if you're blocked it's still a penalty so the officials were correct on that. It is a second down and 11 ball at the 24 yard line out of the shotgun no way that may be a fumble it is Oklahoma's got it and they will take it near midfield another fumble no it's already been whistled already whistled Rufus Alexander the man who put the hit on. Alexander coming away with the football and there's a costly Kansas State turnover. And this is exactly what Oklahoma did last week and exactly what Rufus Alexander did against Texas last week. Down getting near the red zone and Dylan Meyer sees him he needs to throw it. it you cannot even though the receiver's not there throw it away. The man is unblocked. You did not have max protection. You're going to get hit in the mouth anyway. Throw it away. That you don't want to pull the string on that. And that's two weeks in a row that Rufus Alexander has a big forced fumble. Twelfth fumble of the season. Seven have been recovered by the opposition. A first down and ten. They're on 46. Flag goes down on the play. Looking deep. A lot of time. White throws it down inside the ten. Caught. No incomplete. Mm, Matt was close. Mark yes, Clayton. Mark Clayton almost hauled that in, but there is a flag back upfield. Well, the 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 left defensive end for Kansas State, and there's an offensive lineman down. I believe that's Jamal Brown, the right tackle. But uh, the left defensive end, I believe it was Edmonds, jumped into the neutral zone. Now both of these teams are going to have to find yeah. a way to settle down I think that's Jamal Brown Offside, the senior the right tackle 93. still first down. first down so indeed it was it was an incomplete but take a look on the penalty that came way back at the line of scrimmage well and Jason White you can't I mean this is as as smart a quarterback as you're ever going to see he knows he can take a shot here and Mark Clayton nearly comes down with this. Clayton his favorite target Brown who is pass blocking got knocked down in the backfield. Boy, it looked for a second like Mark Clayton came down with this football, didn't it, Gary? I thought he had it. Yeah, so did I. And there's Williams, who I mentioned. Boy, both of those guys playing that ball at its very peak. And it was Williams that at the end there was able to pull one of the hands away from Clayton. Great defensive play. Good play, Williams. Brown still down. 
Wright on a great first series drive for the touchdown. They've got the seven to nothing lead. Jamal Brown coming out of the game looked like the knee. Yep. And Davin, he's on the sideline. Davin Joseph bumps out to right tackle. He's probably their best offensive lineman. And Chris Bush comes in. So maybe try to play with a little confusion here. First down and a five from the 49 yard line. There's Peterson. Peterson taken down in the backfield. Tremendous surge over there as Brett Jones came up from the secondary to move in on the hit. Jones, a guy who he's been in and out of the starting lineup, one of the many junior college transfers that Bill Snyder relies on every single year. Really good speed, but you could see Peterson and how fast he really is. Good job by Jones. Good recognition. Just an absolutely whiff of a block by Mark Bradley. But good recognition to see that a crack block was coming and get outside of it. Second down and eight. A ball at the 48-yard line. As Kansas State trying to shut down this high-powered team. White looking for the flat pass near side. Peterson got it up to midfield, and he will move into Kansas State territory. He both runs and acts as a receiver. The 19-year-old freshman, a six-yard gain. And now Kansas State, will it be three three and outs? Mm, that would be interesting. But highly unusual. <laughs> yes. A guy like Peterson now gives you the chance, if you're Chuck Long, the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma, you can do a play fake here. No need to panic. You're only down seven because everyone's going to be keen on number 28 even when he comes out of the backfield. Third down and two. They'll work out of the shotgun here as White's got four receivers set on the right side. Looks to the weak side. It's complete for the first down and more inside the 20 yard line. Mark Bradley a senior wide receiver and a 28 yard gain. Well he just runs a slant. David Rose the corner to that side was not set in heavy enough. And this is this is just practice for Jason White. He's got a very quick release. You know he doesn't have the strongest arm in the world but his timing is impeccable. He knows where everybody's going to be and Mark Bradley a senior of course been working a few years. But that time Rose the corner he needs to be harder inside knowing on third and short and shotgun you're going to get a slant. It'll be Peterson in the backfield. First down to 10, ball at the 19. They double it up. Peterson ahead of his blocking fullback will gain maybe a yard as they are really king on him and Simmons. Byron Simmons moved in and put the hit on. We'll take a look at the Chrysler passing playbook and we go back to Kansas State's first drive. And we've talked about Dylan Meyer and how good he is for a young quarterback recognizing the mistake was made by Lance Mitchell who's dropping back to give underneath coverage but he has to continue to drop when there's no threat to his side underneath he needs to continue to drop and this just a great throw to Marrero to get them down to the goal line and of course then Darren Sproles finished it off second down and eight Peterson's carried six times eight yards four rushes of one or less so far they fake it to him white getting chased looking to the end zone touchdown wide open Travis Wilson a 17 yard touchdown pass by White that is his ninth tenth rather touchdown pass thrown this year and Travis Wilson is the guy that the coaches really singled out the other day when we were talking to him just going to run a drag and there's almost pressure coming from the back side as Bob Elliott blitzes Maurice Porter the corner but Peterson gets just enough of him and wide open whenever you blitz and it's a rollout with crossing routes it is almost impossible for the defense you've got to get there if you're going to blitz on that type of play that's five touchdown receptions for Travis Wilson he leads the club in that department Trey DiCarlo for the extra point puts it through so a solid drive right there there's Travis Wilson the junior who took that one in for the touchdown and they've come back to tie this game up five plays 54 yards it took only 248 and White went three for three in the air 51 getting it up in the passing game 7-7 seven, seven here let's uh, check in again with Jim Gray Jim all right Gary thank you uh, Jamal Brown was looked at by the training staff and the doctors over here on the Oklahoma bench he sprained his left knee fortunately for him he had the brace on Jamal wants to go back into the game they put the brace back on and it looks like he'll return the next series Gary Good news. just a right tackle he doesn't need to walk very pretty just stand up <laughs> yeah take up space. gotta be able to shuffle that's the whole key though is change of direction so you've got Scott Edmonds over on that side who is the best pass rusher I would give him a free rush now let's check let's let's see if he can go inside and block that 
There you see the scoring drive of Oklahoma. This Oklahoma offense, they can do it both in the air and on the ground, as you're showing here so far, and that's why they're tough to do. Yeah, and Bill Snyder, you know, yesterday when we sat down with him, he said they are so much more difficult to defend now than they were last year when they relied almost exclusively on the pass. Of course, they held up to seven points in that Big 12 championship game. But he said teams going forward are just going to have their hands full with this Oklahoma offense. Now Sproles is back deep for K-State. Keep in mind, he has been fumbling the football and taking off punt returns. The kick by DiCarlo will be taken at the three-yard line by Dennis, the 20, and maybe the 21 before he's brought down Russell Dennison. Put the hit on. It'll be an 18-yard return. Join Al Michaels, John Madden. It's another edition of Monday Night Football. John Gruden and the Bucks will take on the high-powered Marshall Falk Rams. Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. I was in the building last week for the Seattle-St. Louis game. Doing there you go. Radio work. And it's one of the greatest comebacks I've ever seen. Heck of a game. Yes, it was. Keep in mind this Kansas State team is coming off a very demoralizing upset by Kansas last week. They were expected to win and they did not. And uh, they're trying to get back into it. There's the production so far. Time of possession. Kansas State leading there. First down and 10. And uh, Myers not a lot of room to run right there as he ran into Rodney Poole, the junior who came up and put the hit on. And Rodney Poole, another guy that was called out by his coaches for playing at a very high level looking at the coaches tape yesterday of the Texas game he reminds me of a cat you cannot get him off his feet it's unbelievable guys go to try to cut him he's got long arms he just bounces. even when he goes down he's just off the ground like it's on fire this is a very special player around the line of scrimmage and can drop into coverage second down and nine ball at the 22 Kansas State in their dark home uniforms a big rush quick pass incomplete and a flag down and we may have a roughing the quarterback coming yeah. here personal foul. foul it's a it's hit to the, to the head first down. it's got to be a hit to the head I believe it was Rufus Alexander coming on the blitz because this is not a late hit by Alexander and Oklahoma again got themselves in a good third down situation and now with a penalty here comes Alexander unblocked Meyer knows it yep hit to the head and it's a good call by the referee you have to protect the prone players don't know what the boos are coming from <laughs> Kansas State you'd figure would like that maybe they're booing at Alexander yeah it's not necessarily a dirty play it's so hard when you're coming that fast and you know you have to get there and try to th hurry the throw which he did you just tend to hit with your head first three penalties 35 yards has gone against Oklahoma and they've been a couple of them for first downs ball moved to the 37 Dylan Meyer again Hollering out instructions to his receivers in backfield. First down and 10, they shot down and way offside. Well, and Casey jumped the tight end. They had him. And Dylan Meyer is so very good at the hard count. And unfortunately, Ryan Casey didn't get the fact that it was going to be a hard count. These are the problems that have troubled mm -hmm. this team this year, Kansas State. Mental okay. mistakes. Offside, defense number oh, 80. Five yards. Other way. Down. Well, the rule is that if the defender on either side of the offensive player comes into the neutral zone, <laughs> Dan Cody. Cody's not, he doesn't buy it. But the rule is if the defender comes into the neutral zone on either side of the offensive player who moves, he's allowed to jump. Okay, good call. Everybody yeah. moved. Yeah, Cody was in the neutral zone, though, before Casey flinched. So well, there, you don't get five for flinching in that case. Add another five. <laughs> yeah. So another first down and five now as Cody was beside himself, the senior over there on the right side. 7-7, seven, seven, 23 seconds left, 24 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. First down and five again out of that shotgun. Meyer looking, two receivers near side, running a lot of slants, no big rush. He's going for the bomb down at the 20, wide open for a moment, and incomplete. Had that ball been thrown longer, Marrero would have been in for a touchdown, but that's asking a lot because it was about half the field that had to be covered. You know, one of the things that Bob Stoops told us the other day on the phone was how great his defense played mentally against Texas. That's the third blown coverage in the first quarter. If Marrero didn't have to spin around, if Dylan Meyer didn't have to throw this ball on the run, that's a touchdown. Bo Pelini's going to have to make, when they go to break here at the end of the quarter, He's got to settle everybody down because these guys are missing big bodies. They already missed Brian Casey, the 6'7 tight end. Marrero is just running free. 
Oklahoma defense is 15th in the nation against the rush 67th against the pass a second down and five rush was on flats open at midfield it is not complete and it'll be a first down and not an easy catch but there was pretty good coverage out here in the near side them on figures out of Lakeland Florida a gain of six on that the wide receiver and figures a guy that they're figuring to be a really big player he had a couple of great <laughs> thank you he had a couple of great catches against Kansas in traffic and that there was that there was a nice catch Garrett that was a nice catch <laughs> got myself in the Midwest yes draw. you did and that's going to do it here in the first quarter and a bit of a surprise because Kansas State is playing a solid football game. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. It's 7 to 7. This BCS Classic Moment is presented by City. Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma Sooners ran into a rugged LSU defense in the 2004 Nokia Sugar Bowl. Harassed all night by the Tigers, Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Jason White threw two interceptions, including this one in the third quarter that LSU's Marcus Spears returned for a touchdown. LSU would hold on for the 21-14 win. football here <laughs> we're talking about who's the toughest man ever to tackle in football and I think I mean I'm just looking back we're talking about Jim Brown you yeah, were talking yeah about the guys I used to play with the Cardinals used to say Emmitt Smith was really tough yeah. but we, the reason we were talking about it is because of Adrian Peterson yeah. I mean he's as big as anybody on the field he's been held down pretty well here second quarter underway first and ten ball at the 48 yard line and uh, we also were talking there during the break about the need for Kansas State to stay in the offense cannot give Oklahoma the football I looking deep plenty of time he's throwing deep near side another receiver and a flag yeah, is that's down. a good call Bassey was beat Bassey on the coverage for the Sooners down at about the 20 yard line yeah, Bassey was beat that's the second time that they've run the the pump and go on Bassey earlier he made the nice play down on the uh, down towards the end zone and this time he was beaten so he just reached out and grabbed Marrera which is a very Holding wise penalty defense. These Number receivers 13, are yeah, wide open by down, five yards. Yard well, and, and when we talked to the defensive guys from Oklahoma, they said that Kansas State, even without James Terry, their fine receiver last year, still very, very good players. They're all young, but Marrera that time went right by Bassey. But you'll take five yards over six points yeah. every day. Five penalties now, 50 yards have been marched off against Oklahoma. This is the defense that shut out Texas, remember. A very good offensive team and Oklahoma just struggling right now even though it's 7 7 first down and uh, 10 looking for a little room and it'll be down inside the 40 yard line there and scrolls for a four yard gain. Let's take a look at our pack life game some and this is the receiver Marrera that we've been talking about quite a bit that time even though he didn't make the catch to play before he got a good penalty to pick up the first down and they must have seen something. This time he runs a little bit of a drag. He ran a hitch and go before, and this was just a really nice route and a better throw by Dylan Meyer over the top of Lance Mitchell. And right now, everything that's being called by Kansas State seems to be coming up roses. Second down and six, ball at the 38-yard line as Kansas State moves into Oklahoma territory yet again out of the shotgun. Meyer looking over the middle, get the big man open, cut, the old question of the chicken or the egg should I go through the body or should I play the ball and Rodney Poole played the ball and Dylan Meyer he is he's on it's pinpoint I mean he could not have thrown that ball any better Rodney Poole decided to go to the outside shoulder to knock it down and a perfect throw by Meyer becomes a touchdown Reem for the extra point and it is up and good a 38 yard touchdown reception 79 yards in five plays and Kansas State retakes the lead. Dylan Meyer coming in 62 percent completion rate nine for 14 and 124 yards so far today. The Pontiac drive summary it a lot of this is being helped by penalties by Oklahoma as well. They 
jumping off sides and getting personal fouls and really helping the cause for the Wildcats. It's an amazing start uh, for Kansas State in this game and you can almost see the shock in the, the eyes of the Sooners coaches and players mm -hmm. and Bo Pelini who's has a deep NFL background. He'll get it straight. Now. After kickoff uh, this is going to be taken at the 12 yard line. Bradley's got it up to the 20 and gets tipped upside down to the 24. Mike Bradley did it at 11 yard gain and another flag. They're flying all over the place out there right now. One of them came in after the whistle. Yeah, there was some. No, I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. Oh, yeah? Says who? We remind you again, last year, Big 12 championship. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma heavily favored. Kansas State beat the. You can say it. It's not. They don't have to. <laughs> Everybody knows. Yes, they did. They did, and it was a big upset. Now, you don't. You know, necessarily carry that over to the next year, especially when you're Oklahoma and you're five and all. But you know, the funny thing is, no one ever talks to the flip side, the yep. Bill Snyder side. You know what that proves to his team? We can whip these guys. That's exactly. I mean, right. you can talk revenge, you know, focus, all that. But the guys in purple probably all week said, you know what? We did it once. Let's do it again. Beginning. And no one. And let's go back. No one gave them a chance last year either. That's right. I mean, you know, yeah, they've lost a couple, a couple in a row. They lost to Kansas last week, but I think they were. I want to say about 18 point underdogs in that Big 12 championship game at least. There are two penalties here. Kansas State was offside, but Oklahoma had a personal foul called after the whistle. So that's what the officials here are discussing. John Laurie. Machine. Offside, Kansas State. That penalty is accepted. Personal foul, Oklahoma. That penalty is also accepted. Results in a 10 yard penalty. Re kick. Ooh. So there you go. John Laurie, our referee, explaining it for you. And we'll get the kick again. Let's look back at the uh, the touchdown, and we'll slow it down. And you watch Rodney Poole, who he rotated late. He was up near the line of scrimmage, and he made a choice here that he's going to go try to knock it down. And he's made this play a bunch. I've seen him do it on film. But again, Dylan Meyer could not have thrown a better ball. And I believe Jim Gray may have been eavesdropping again over there, huh, Jim? As he goes over and talks to him. I'm sure Jim uh, was close enough to hear what they were talking about. Well I caught the tail end of it guys and he told him he was at the wrong place and he said you can't make the play when you start at the wrong place. So apparently that indicates on that replay as you said Ed that he rotated too quickly. Yeah and, and, and Jim early in the in the first quarter we saw three missed coverages and so Bo Pelini saying to Brodney Poole listen if you're going to line up wrong and not get there you better go make that tackle. Because if you're a half step late, it's a touchdown instead of a 10 or 15 yard game. They beat Texas Tech, a very good passing team. They beat Texas, a very good rushing team mm -hmm. in their last two games. But they are down here, 14 to 7. And the re kick, the 45 yard line, will be sent back into the end zone. And there it will be down. They wanted to make sure. All right, it's time for the app line. The trivia question of the week. And here it is. How many times have two different players from the same school won the Heisman Trophy in consecutive years? I don't have a clue for this one. I, I usually have a clue every year. As those chase songs go rolling <laughs> along. That's part of the clue. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got Jason White, who won it last year, and Adrian Peterson, who's starting to creep up. Although I get a vote, if I had to vote today, it'd be Kyle Orton. But Adrian Peterson is definitely after 225 on the Longhorns. Sooners on the offense over the 20. Peterson on the charge. Maybe a three-yard gain. And Jesse Titwa moved up and put the hit on the strong safety coming up. And he runs so hard, Adrian Peterson does. And one thing that he will have to work on is a little bit of patience. Because he needs to gather his feet sometimes. He gets going so fast that he should be able to do what's called a dead leg and spin out of that. And he'll get that. Those are just little nuances that you don't learn in high school. You learn those when you come up with the big boys in Division 1A. Good job by Kansas State holding the big uh, runner down, the youngster. That'll be caught and taken for a first down uh, just over the marker. Brandon Jones on the reception. And we'll check in with John Saunders. John. Gary, Minnesota trying to avoid losing for the second consecutive week. Lost to Michigan last week. Drew Stanton to Eric Knox. Second time these two guys have hooked up wide open. The defense of Michigan State has been non-existent. 28 points in just over a quarter. That's amazing. And don't forget the BCS, the first BCS poll mm -hmm. will come out on Monday. 
So these games obviously being played this weekend will affect that. A first down and 10 ball at the 31 yard line an eight yard gain on that last one out of the shotgun Peterson the fake white looking near side it'll be caught at the 35 and immediately down a four yard gain will peoples a senior wide receiver and of course that BCS tweaked once again because of what happened last year with USC and don't forget that a, a, a part of the BCS is it's not just where you are in the polls it's how many votes you have in the polls and if Oklahoma who's struggling today even if they end up winning if they struggle against Kansas State and USC goes and beats Arizona State handily although I don't think that will happen you could have them gain a little bit of an advantage in the BCS. Jason White the Heisman Trophy winner running the offense for the Oklahoma Sooners on a second down and six ball at the 35 yard line Peterson's got a blocker in front and what a block was put on and it springs him up close to a first down J.D. Reynolds a junior fullback sprung him loose with a great block and a four yard game and, and Runnels a guy that the coaches were telling us has just as much to do with this running game as the offensive line watch him come out he's going to cut block kind of move him over there watch this great cut block on the linebacker that's just an excellent job on Brandon Archer and you get a defender on the ground like that and a runner like Peterson gets the edge forget about it. it's all downhill another big third down they try and bring it up quickly a third down and one they are one for three Oklahoma third down conversion so far third down and one they'll flip it Peterson to the line of scrimmage and he gets the first down and a couple extra on that second charge again good blocking by Runnels and a four yard gain as Peterson starts to heat it up a little bit we are in Manhattan Kansas great to have you with us the number two team in the nation Oklahoma trailing they were down seven nothing they tied it Kansas State has come back put another one on the board 14 seven and a shocker so far yeah. and this is exactly what Oklahoma needs though is a nice methodical their defense not only does their defense need a rest they need a, a good stern talking to about where to line up they have been just on the back end especially they just have not been in the right place Scott Edmonds just limped off of the Wildcat defense white deep in the pocket and looking deep down at the 20 he's got a man open cut and down inside the 15 is Travis Wilson Wilson caught the touchdown pass and both of these secondaries are being tested deep and Maurice Porter turned his head right at the wrong time it's so hard when you're playing deep you're running with Travis Wilson he was with him stride for stride and he just decided at the last possible moment to peek back and that's right you know a good receiver they're going to glide through that part of their route they're not going to go full speed so that when the ball's in the air they have that extra little step and of course great air put on the ball by Jason White allowed Travis Wells Wilson to run through it a 41 yard gain first down and 10 ball at the 14 Oklahoma trying to get this game tied up again Peterson the long setback he'll carry 15 what was that <laughs> and driven out of bounds it looked like the ball started running the other way Cedric Williams takes him for a yard loss as he tries to put this ball away he had a fumble last week against Texas but there was no harm no fouls the ball went out of bounds <laughs> Whoa, a little slippery. Well, it's a home crowd. I wonder if they sprayed it with WD-40 before they <laughs> sent it out for the Oklahoma possession. <laughs> and a second down and 11. The Heisman Trophy winner, Jason White, six for his last six, 105 yards and a TD. He goes to the shotgun here. Two receivers set to the near side. Wilson to the left. White looking right back for Wilson in the end zone. Open touchdown. Boy he's just running by yeah. people they keep overloading one side and have Wilson on the other and he's had two receptions well and they're rolling the coverage to the two and three receiver side and this time again it's Maurice Porter on the coverage and if you're going to be one on one you cannot give the middle of the field away that is just a brilliant move by Travis Wilson though. You, you can't take that away I mean Maurice Porter should have been set heavier inside but Wilson he tapped him and then he broke back hard inside and again. The, the, the bell cow of this receiving core is Mark Clayton, but the coaches talk just as much about Travis Wilson. And that kick is up, and it is good. So they've come back to tie this up. Another touchdown pass, White on the money. Travis Wilson, his favorite target here today. With us, everybody, football before breakfast. Here in Manhattan, Kansas, this game started at 11 o'clock local time. So our statisticians are preparing numbers for Oklahoma before and after breakfast. Uh, eight plays, 80 yards, 339, two touchdown catches for Wilson. 
He's now had 77 yards on four receptions on the two TDs. Well, coming into this game, everyone talked about balance for this Oklahoma offense. 254 rushing is their average per game, 204 passing. It's been the flip flop of that so far today. Sproles, again, getting a chance to return, hangs on to that one at the two, 15, 20. And that hole closes at the 24-yard line. Tony Cade on the hit, a 22-yard return. Our Aflac trivia question, let's take a look. The How many times two different players from the same school have won the Heisman Trophy consecutive years? And our answer is Larry Kelly and Clint Frank, Yale, 36 and 37, and Doc Blanchard and Glenn Davis with Army, 45 and 46. See, the reason I didn't have a clue for that, if only one guy wore a helmet, it's a little too it's a little before my time ah you weren't there with the uh, great army teams there <laughs> no. the inside outside didn't call any of those no <laughs> first down and 10 ball at the 24 yard line white out of the shot uh, the shotgun handoff Sprawls will take it as Kansas State will get five on that carry Aaron Sproles Sproles trying to regain the form that he had last year that made him a Heisman favorite coming into this season. Could not be a better young man. This guy, we've already talked about the fumbles. He had two muffs against Texas A&M. Both of those led to points. On Sunday, they give the players off at Kansas State. He spent over an hour out here by himself working on ball drills, knowing that he had to do a better job. He is the ultimate team player. Fire out of the shotgun. He's got the option. He looks at the hole, finds it, 30. And maybe the 33 before he's docked back. A gain of three yards. Dan Cody, the senior, moved in to put the hit on. Well, now they need to teach Dylan Meyer that you don't help the defender up off the grass. You make him have to lift himself up. Not your friend out there. Let's no. check. We've got a friend in New York, John Saunders. John. And Gary, Illinois just trying to hang in there against Michigan. John Butcher from the two yard line. Toss to the end zone to Pierre Thomas. And they're on the board, trailing Michigan now by just three. Got some interesting scores going mm -hmm. on in the early games. This will bring up a third down and two, three for four, third down conversions. Again, no. That'll be thrown for a loss. The option play again. And Rufus Harris, who has started the last five games, threw him for a one-yard loss. Well, and Dylan, Dylan Meyer has to get out of this play. He runs an option into one, two, three, four, five defenders to the plus side of the A-gap, to the play side, and there's only four blockers. Well, it's just not going to get her done. You've got to check out of that, go back to the other side, or call some kind of pass to the other side. Good play by Rufus Alexander, the sophomore who put that hit on, forcing the punt. On the fourth down and three, kick from uh, the 20 yard line, high enough, handled. Chance for a return to the 40, and that's where he's going to be brought down. Rankins on the carry, fumble. Is there a whistle? No, no, there's a whistle. Hang on. 36 yard punt, seven yard return. The whistle had blown, there was no fumble. We've got 816 left to go here in the first half. We're in Manhattan, Kansas, and a good one. Oklahoma offense has been on the move. White has gone in the last two drives, seven for seven, 119 yards and two touchdowns to tie the game up. Well, I tell you, you really got to have a talk to him about being more efficient. <laughs> there, there he goes on stretches. I was telling you during one of the breaks, you know, he may not have the best arm and he's got a bunch of injuries, issues. If I'm an NFL team, second, late second, third round pick, just because of that, you, you can't coach that. He works out of the shotgun here over the middle 45 and uh, up to about the 49 yard line a gain of eight on that one as James Moses tight end got it Wednesday on ABC see the show that's being called the best new drama on TV in an all new lost Wednesday at 8 7 central only on ABC which is what our crew was this morning at 6 o'clock <laughs> yes. when they tried to in the dark and cold to find They the kept stadium. bumping into the truck, couldn't find the door. <laughs> there you see the yardage, Oklahoma. Rush pass, total of 152. Trying to get the passing game going. White deep, big rush, throws deep. And it'll be incomplete. And he got hammered. Oh, yes, he, he had to get rid of that as Quentin Eccles, a sophomore, 6'2", 305, put him on his back. And Jason White, we were talking, of course, today has been mostly passed, but yesterday we sat down with him and asked him about the balance that they've, the newfound balance. 
teams have to prepare for both the run and pass. They have to, prepare, you know, decide whether they're going to put some guys down in the box to stop the run, or if they're going to, have to or if they're going to uh, decide to, you know, drop eight and to defend the pass. So uh, it's kind of a guessing game. Heisman Trophy winner. When you try to outguess a Heisman Trophy winner, you can run into trouble. That was his first incomplete in the last nine attempts. We've got a timeout being taken here by the Sooners. Tie game. Well, Jim Gray was talking with Bob Elliott before the game, and Bob said, you know, we just haven't made many big plays this year. We've been in close spots, but we haven't made the plays. Well, you hate to say this is an important third down, but this is. is an important third down. But a third down and one ball at the 49. Yes. 7.34 to go here in the first half. Third down and one. This team converts 59% of their third down opportunities coming into this game. See what they do with it here. Peterson, the big man out of the backfield. He will get it, and he'll get more than that. And if he'd gotten away, he might have got it all. He will take that one down to about the 44-yard line as Davin Joseph, a junior, right guard, got over there to help, pulled right out in front of him and opened up a hole. Well, this is just a case of my guy is better than your guys. I mean, Adrian Peterson, he, he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. It doesn't, doesn't look like he's going to pick up the first down. That's Maurice Matt coming up to make the hit. He just spins off and just never, ever, ever stops his leg. Seven-yard gain, his longest of the day. First down at 10. In Kansas State Territory, 44. They fake to him. White's getting the big rush. Gets it off as he gets hit. And that's going to be intercepted or out of bounds. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Couldn't get the feet down. Maurice Mack, a sophomore out of that free safety position. And Marvin Simmons came on the blitz and made Jason White run for his life and got a good shot. Jason White got up very slowly from this hit. Watch the right side of your screen. It was an absolute blown assignment by Oklahoma. It seems to me, you know, they talked about focus and being ready and everything else. It seems to me that Oklahoma is not focused and they are not picking up their assignments. That's a blown protection. We've seen blown coverages. And Jason White took a mean shot. Second down and 10. Ball still at the 44 out of the shotgun. Receivers each way. Peterson on the carry. And now they keen. That's going to be for a loss. Kevin Huntley. The reads, obviously, for the Wildcat defense are on Adrian Peterson, the running back for the Sooners. And when he gets the football, he's got three purple around him. Well, and when you've got a guy six foot eight, 265 pounds, <laughs> you can be Hercules. But if you don't see him coming, Huntley's going to put something on you. This is the guy that the coaches say they want him walking off the bus first because of how scary he looks. A loss of a yard. Keep in mind, Peterson has had at least 100 in the first five games. He's got 12 rushes, 28 yards here. He's being held back. It is a third down and 10. Well, here comes, looks like pressure from the corner. I don't think you can let White stand in there. White's got time. Third and 10. Over the middle. Incomplete. He threw it a little behind. Travis Wilson, who was covered by David Rose, the senior. And this K Day of State defense stands up. And I think that this should have been a pressure down for Kansas State. They rushed three. And the only reason that this is not a first down for Oklahoma is because Jason White throws it behind Wilson. Wilson's so good and physical, sets up the defensive backs. But this is, that's a first down if Jason White gets that out in front of number four. But I just think that Kansas State needs to bring some pressure on that one. Yaman Figures is back. Blake Ferguson will be doing the punting from about his own 45. 6-10 to go in the half as the K-State defense gets the job done. High kick. It'll be a fair catch call for at the 10. And that is exactly where it is taken. So that's where Kansas State will start at a 33-yard punt. First and 10. Coming up. Will be the Valvoline Halftime Show. John Craig and former Indy All-American Aaron Taylor. They'll have stories and highlights. Plus, take a look at who of the 13 unbeaten will remain that way. That's our Valvoline Halftime Show. Gary Thorne, Ed Cunningham, Jim Gray down on the field, and all of our crew. Delighted to have you with us here. Number two in the nation, Oklahoma looking to go 6-0. They're tied right now. And this is where Bob Stoops traditionally kind of cuts his defense loose you've got a young quarterback although a heady one and Dylan Meyer backed up standing in shotgun at the five this is the worst field position Kansas State has had to start from in the first half out of the shotgun Meyer gets time gets hit gets it off incomplete at the 30 yard line had two receivers together crisscrossing as he got leveled and Carl Pendleton remember Dusty Dvorak is already 
off the team. Carl Pendleton, a freshman, comes in, and as Cody goes to finish the play, he rolls up on the legs of Pendleton, and Oklahoma, already thin in that defensive tackle rotation, cannot lose this young man. So he is down on the field. Can't tell you how many times you see this. Two guys rushing for the quarterback, and as the bodies come together and collide, there's that scissor action as Cody went down as he was fighting off the block. So they have lost one in the offensive line. They uh, have Carl Pendleton coming out here. Great rush by Dan Cody. This guy's going to be just a sensational pro defensive end. But watch Dylan Meyer as he goes to tackle him will fall right on the ankle of Pendleton. It's good to see him moving off and but again you get thinner and thinner and as this season continues to wear on you always want three to four and sometimes five defensive tackles to rotate in. Well Oklahoma's down to two or three and Cody the senior Pendleton out of there a second down and ten ball at the eleven dangerous territory for Kansas State which has coughed the ball up a lot this season. And Oklahoma putting the pressure on linebackers in the gaps coming from the outside over the middle. That'll be incomplete. No, there's a flag back as the quarterback got hit. Great coverage by Clint Ingram, who reached in and knocked that away, but the flag is in the backfield. And that could go either mm. way. Typically holding. Yeah. Ball's at the 11 yard line. It well. is a personal foul on Kansas State. Well the question for Oklahoma I think you decline this you're only going to pick up the half the distance so it'd be second and 15 I'd much rather have third and 10 than second and 15 get that football back oh yes. 553 left to go and that's what they're talking about on the sideline now he wants they, to know the down yeah he, he's it is second so it goes to third I would decline this for sure there you go yeah it's always good to have the information correct isn't yes. it Personal foul, hands to the face, number 60. Penalties declined. Third down. So it does bring up a third down. They've not been able to pick anything up in the first two tries. It'll be third down and 10. Ball at the 11-yard line. They've worked out of the shotgun even deep here. The play coming in from the sideline. Davin Dennis will bring the play in as Brian Casey comes out and now you're starting to see Oklahoma getting pressure with four they're not going to need to blitz now because Dan Cody's turned up his motor a little bit starting to get some pressure inside so now you can drop and play cover with seven guys they bring a defensive pass coverage out of the shotgun it's the quarterback draw up to about the 12 yard line and well, only a gain of a yard on that. So it'll bring up a fourth down punting situation. Great to have you with us. Number two, Oklahoma, Kansas State going at it. 14-14 here in the first half. Both quarterbacks have played very well. The defensive backfields have had their problems. With Ed Cunningham and Jim Gray, I'm Gary Thorne. And Manhattan, Kansas, hoping for yet another upset for their purple passion out there on the field. As Kansas State upset Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. See if the rush is on here. They're going to take a timeout. Oklahoma could not get their people mm -hmm. on the field. Well, it shouldn't be that much confusion. I mean, you know it's third down. Your special teams coach has everyone gathered. And now you only have one timeout going towards the end of the half. The punt coming up. 5-18 left to go in the half. They only had 10 men on the field, the Sooners. Not happy about that because a timeout had to be used where you don't want to use one. Well, and the question becomes with only 10 on the field, it's, you're not in punt protection. If you were in punt protection, you better get that extra body out there. But you need to tell your captains, the guys who are in charge of calling your timeouts on teams and offense and defense, listen, if we've got a return set up or whatever, just play it. Who cares? We'll only get a three-yard return instead of a seven-yard return. You don't want to waste that timeout. Bill Snyder walk, walking out onto the field. He was almost at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> He's ready to block. <laughs> All right. The punt will come from about the goal line, and Jesse Martinez has been sharing the punting duties. He is in there now to do the punting. Martinez gets it off. High kick. Back for it is Rankins. Rankins will take it at the 45 over midfield up to the 40 and in, in the offensive territory. And we'll check in with Jim Gray. Jim. Gary, there are a couple doctors in the training staff looking at the left knee of Carl Pendleton. They keep trying to get some mobility. And every time they try and move it back and forth, laterally on the table he's in tremendous pain so his return is very much in doubt right now. Mm. 
Hate to see that. And they brought Lawrence Dampier, a guy who's not even listed on their two deep. So things for a defense that played so well the last two weeks starting to get very thin at, at and especially this defense, such a key position. 44 yard punt, 16 yard return. Devin Joseph back in. First down and 10. Ball at the 37. Good field position here. The best field position Oklahoma has had in this first half. Fake the handoff. White goes to the flats. Look out here. 30. And down to the 25 yard line is Mark Clayton. Clayton on a 12 yard gain, the all time leader at Oklahoma in receptions. You know, Gary Danielson last year before the Sugar Bowl made a great point about Mark Clayton. Of course, last year's wide receiving class may be the best ever in college football, and there was always the argument who was the best. And Gary said that you can make the argument all you want about who the best receiver is. The best receiver after the catch in America is Mark Clayton. He just has that ability where he doesn't have to see people coming. He just knows where they are and makes that little move. That time, dead to rights for no gain at all. He ends up picking up the first down. 28 career touchdown catches. He gets about one a game. And a timeout uh, taken by the officials here with a first down at 10. Ball at the 25. I think they're trying to decide whether somebody actually called a timeout or not. Or the uh, clock. Yeah, trying to run the play clock. Yeah. The referee has come out of the game with a pulled muscle so the field judge has come on and taken his place now and will act as the referee Tom Walker the field judge is now the referee first and ten ball at the 25 yard line Oklahoma trying to get a lead here they've had to come back twice back in white looking near side that'll be caught and it is a completed pass and he was in the air and Travis Wilson having a day in reception says I got a first down let's see if he got the little toe tap does it take the two toe tap just the one toe tap you'll be able to see the little uh, nuggets fly up as well that's catch good call he got the left one down and the, the crowd is reacting because his right clearly comes down but it's left right good call great call actually Good call. Johnny on the spot. That'll be a first and ten. Ball at the 13. Oklahoma moving the football. Sending the man in motion. Moses to the left side slot. White handoff. Peterson. And again he's hit. There is no room for him to develop any speed as Simmons again on the hit on a two-yard loss. And one thing that Oklahoma has not run yet today, and it's shocking to me, is the flip. They ran it last week against Texas where they fake a handoff to the right and they flip it back and don't even really block. Right now, they're allowing Kansas State to flow right to the ball. There's no counteraction, and Simmons just completely unblocked. Again, I don't care how good your running back is. You leave a linebacker like Simmons unblocked, and he's going to make that tackle. Sixth time that he has run the ball for a yard or less. Peterson, second down, 12 from the 15-yard line. After that loss, they fake up the middle. Completed at the 11 back up to the 10 and inside at the nine yard line Brandon Jones a senior wide receiver for a six yard gain Oklahoma's got plenty of time here with 350 left to go in the half and a guy like Jason White at quarterback can try to work this clock a little bit but on third down you'd love to have been moving a little bit more down in the red zone so you could try not to give Kansas State the ball back but now all you're concerned about is picking up this first down or get it close and make your coach think about going for it on fourth down big third down yes. play third down and six third and six at the nine yard line two receivers to the near side Jason White back in the pocket looking end zone gets hit tries to throw it away and it's incomplete almost intercepted in the end zone and White on his back again and again it was Maurice Mack who moved in with the pressure well and Kevin Huntley the defensive end just absolutely whipped Wes Sims with a great inside move watch this move right to the inside and Jason White starts to get hit floats this in the air and credit Mark Clayton for knocking this ball out of the hands of the defender this will be a 26 yard field goal attempt with this game a tied Trey DiCarlo on to do the kicking for Oklahoma his kick is up and it is through the uprights and that was a bullet shot that he put up that time and so for the first time in the game Oklahoma has taken the lead. They do it on a drive they could not convert to the TD, but DiCarlo now six out of eight in field goals. 
Well, the number two team in the nation is Oklahoma. Kansas State is not ranked. They're playing right with them. Oh yeah, they're two and three. I, they're not. They're, they were more ranked than ranked coming into this game, but this is a mirror reflection of a mirror reflection. Wow, exactly the same. Got the field goal though, as Oklahoma will take the lead here. And uh, there's still time with 3:12 left to go for Kansas State to do something with it. They'll have time. Sproles is back at about the two-yard line for this kick. You've got a quarterback in Dylan Meyer. He's got plenty of timeouts, plenty of time. He's got complete command of the offense. Cut him loose. And this will be in the end zone and maybe out of it. It is. So the ball will come out to the 20. It'll be a first down and a 10. Oh, I think it was Torrey Holt they got the first week to dress up in a 2 2. It was hilarious. Dress up in a 2 2? Yes. Holy it moly. It's very becoming. Very becoming. I'm not going to say what. <laughs> this will be worked out of the shotgun. Dylan Meyer, first and 10, ball at the 20 yard line. Instructions given. Sproles moves around him to the right side. There, Oklahoma's back past defense. Little button hook to the near side at the 25 yard line and taken out of bounds on the pass. Tony Madison, the senior, who's caught a couple of touchdown passes this season, takes that one. And they're going to try to work the sideline a little bit, but I wouldn't get too conservative out there on the sideline. If Dylan Meyer throws it late, remember, of course, Anton Antonio Perkins is out with an MCL, but these guys can cover, and if he throws it late, that could be a pick six the other way. You can still work the middle of the field with three timeouts. And they do have the three remaining here. A second down and five, ball at the 25-yard line. Again, they uh, showed the corner coming up, looking like a blitz. Meyer moved up to the line. Looking out of the shotgun, two receivers right side. Whoa! And that'll be taken up to midfield. And I mean, there was some room for Yamon Figures. Figures, another reception, 24 yard gain and a first down. And they're working the side that Anya Nugetcha is on, remember, replacing Antonio Perkins. And right now, the Oklahoma secondary has just looked befuddled the entire afternoon. Jim Gray overheard Bo Pelini talking about listen, if you're out of position, don't even try to make the play. Just make the tackle. And right now, Dylan Myers just finding holes all over the place. 49 yard line is where the spot is made. Figures has now caught five for 76 yards and a touchdown. Sproles trying to find a little running room into Oklahoma territory. He'll have a gain of four. And no need to, a timeout here. Well, no, they didn't no. call it. I, I, Dylan Meyer was looking at the sideline. I thought they were going to call it. But this is a good, wise decision not to use it. You've got plenty of time. You don't even, you need to not be in a rush, just hurry. Anya Nagacho was the man who moved in, put the hit on out of the shotgun on a second down and five. Little flare pass, Sproles turned back to the middle, trying to get it up. Flags are down all over the place. He did not get back to the original line of scrimmage. Lance Mitchell on the hit. That'll stop the clock with a flag out. And they've got an illegal procedure on Kansas State. Now Dylan Meyer needs to know that the clock will start once they get it reset. So he's still got to kind of stay in that little free up mode. Now do they want it was a second down and five. They're going to refuse the penalty. And bring up a, a very important third down. So they refuse the call and now Kansas to state. Will have a third down situation. Their conversion rate on third downs nowhere near as good obviously as Oklahoma but not bad at 42 percent. Well, you know they accepted that penalty. I, I saw Stoops was over there it looked like he was waving his yeah. arms to wave it off. Well they took it so mm -hmm. it's second down and 11. He was saying no. Yes it did look like it. But the team took it second down and 11 ball at the 48 yard line. Kansas State back in their own territory now looking to the sideline flats oh. incomplete. That was thrown like a bullet and maybe <laughs> oh, could have been caught. Herrera would have had to have hands of steel on that one. Well, when you get over to the sideline and you're Dylan Meyer playing against a team like Oklahoma, you're, the tendency for a young quarterback, and he's got plenty of arm, which is, again, talking about that right shoulder. He had surgery during high school. He banged it really hard against Western Kentucky and again against Texas A&M. But that was, a, that was high heat. Now the third down. Third down and 11th. Big third down play. Kansas State trailing by a field goal with uh, two minutes left to go in this first half. And, uh, and Oklahoma's showing blitz. I'll be surprised if they don't back out 
They're filling the gaps with folks. They bring them. They're looking for the screen over the middle. It is incomplete. Dan Cody, the man who got in there and knocked it down. And that's exactly what we were told, uh, Dan, that they wanted to do. They want to move yes. people around and try and keep Meyer guessing and well, off balance. They have a lot of respect for what he knows, but they, they still say he's still young. And Dan Cody's just going to – actually, Dan Cody's standing up. They've done something that they started last week where they were allowing big number 80 to stand up and play almost a linebacker position. And Dylan Meyer has to be very aware that just because he's a big defensive end, he may not be coming each time. That was dangerous. So a fourth down and 11. The kick will come from the 38-yard line. Rankins, it'll take a uh, hop for the Wildcats and end up all the way down at the seven-yard line. With a minute 46 remaining to go, a 46-yard punt. Well, and they, these two coaches know each other from way back. They all worked under Hayden Fry at Iowa. Unbelievable staff that Hayden Fry had while he was idle. Bill Snyder was the offensive coordinator for Hayden for years. Coached in junior college with him. Bob Stoops was a young defensive backs coach, and then eventually Bill Snyder brought him here ended up being his defensive coordinator. Now let's see if the Wildcats can get the turnover they want now. The minute 46 remaining as Oklahoma's got the football. First and 10 ball at the seven their own seven yard line. Right on the flip. Peterson on the carry or trying. He'll get nothing. And boy Kansas State has really done a tremendous job in stopping this young runner. Mm -hmm. and, and if that's if that's what Oklahoma's going to try to do is just play it safe here. Don't call your timeout here. Call it after your second and third down. Actually they went ahead and called it. I always think you should call it on second and third down and try to save one in your hip pocket for your offense. So they'll take the time out here. We thought we were coming into a game where we would see enormous chunks of yardage picked up in the running game. Mm -hmm. That is not necessarily proven to be the case. <laughs> Look at the yardage total yards have they've all been in the passing department. Well it's obvious what both of these teams were getting ready for yes. coming into this. You know Oklahoma when we talked to their coaches this week they said it was obvious during the course of the game that Texas got ready to play their passing game. Greg Robinson and Dick Tomey their new defensive coordinators at Texas after watching the film from last year and early this year thought that they would not they, they would have a tougher time defending the pass so they dropped out a lot more and now they're seeing against Kansas State the flip side Bob Elliott told us yesterday he said you know you just can't load up the box because they still have so many players. Well I think he might have fibbed to us a little bit. They seem to always have an extra man in the box. Passing game has been good for both teams here. Sproles started it out with a one yard run to give Kansas State the lead. Wilson a 17 yard reception tied it. And then we went to the air game and uh, Kansas State has uh, has been able to put it into the end zone more than anticipated here in the first half but a field goal a 26 yarder by DiCarlo at 312 to go has been here in the second quarter is the difference in the game a second down and 10 ball at the seven yard line as the Wildcats of Kansas State defending against the pass a little flat shot out here at the seven to the 10 15 and driven out of bounds at the 20 yard line first down Mark Clayton again so you were talking about it carrying the football well and Brett Jones the free safety is in perfect position but Mark Clayton just has that ability to, to tap and jump back and move around and just does a great job of making Jones fall right on his face it looked like it was going to be a one or two yard gain and there's Clayton getting out of bounds so you got a guy who can run with it those are the kind of passes you throw just get it to him in the flat and then let him carry it he had a 12 yard gain on that one first and 10 ball at the 19 white under quarterback pitches back fullback carry up to the 22 yard line that's Jones the junior who came in back up running back and he'll pick up two well now Kansas State looking over to see if they want to take a timeout or not with only two I don't think you take it after the first down Coach yeah. Snyder not giving any indication if you're going to do it you have to do it now yet with only two you have to do it after second down two timeouts remaining for Kansas State one for Oklahoma and, and I don't blame Bob Stoops at all trying just to run this clock out running Kiwan Jones they ran Adrian Peterson earlier a very safe throw to Mark Clayton let's get to the to the uh, 
halftime, we've got a lot of adjustments mentally to make for the second half. We're already up three. Let's not push our luck. Second down and eight. Ball at the 21-yard line. A lot of room over there to the 30. Another first down and up to about the 33. Jones again on the carry. Ewan Jones finding a little running room over there as he had a huge hole off that tackle. Well, now Oklahoma, even though Kansas State with two timeouts, is going to be able to run out this clock without a first down. And I'm sure that was the goal that Stoops just really wants to get into the they've got a lot it's going to take them a long time as coaches to meet before they go in and meet with the players luckily they have 20 minutes they're going to probably take about 10 or 12 of that as coaches and say what in the world has been going on in our secondary believe it or not that's the longest running gain of either team in the first <laughs> half right there that 12 yard gain yeah. and yeah. unbelievably Adrian Peterson five of his 14 runs in the first half gain or lost yardage that's unreal so they will just let the clock tick down here Oklahoma will take the 17 uh, to 14 lead and we'll go down to Jim Gray Jim all right Gary thank you very much Bob what's your assessment of your team's first half well I'd li like to have played better we uh, got ourselves in a hole early started to play some defense in the second quarter uh, offense has moved the ball some we got to get a running game going why all the penalties and the problems in the secondary? Yeah. Well, we'll see. I, you know, the penalties, uh, hey, it, you know, it's, uh, I guess we're just not disciplined enough not to get them. Bob, thank you. Good luck okay. in the second half. Gary? And obviously not very happy no. about it either. Oklahoma's got the lead 17 14 at the half. Coming up next, the Valvoline Halftime Show. John, Craig, and Aaron will be along after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching Championship Television. This lady has reason to cheer. Kansas State had a lead twice in the game, and they're right in there against the number two team in the nation. John Saunders, Fred James, and Aaron Taylor here with the Valvoline <laughs> Halftime Show. We'll talk more about that game in a moment. Oklahoma, the buildup so long for that game against Texas, but you didn't expect the letdown against K-State because of what K-State did to Oklahoma in the championship game last year. And the players were talking about it at Oklahoma, how this really wasn't a week where they were going to go out and talk about revenge. They weren't worried about that. They recognized this was a different Kansas State football team than the one that beat them in the Big 12 last year. Well, they're in the locker room right now, and I guarantee you, Aaron, they're saying, uh-oh, you know what? They've, they've showed up again, and Snyder has a heck of a coaching staff, and they got him ready to play. That's what he did, and what he did is he's loading the box he's trying to take away the running game of Oklahoma and he's doing it very effectively ha what's your answer to that let Jason White throw the ball get them more involved don't be so unidimensional <laughs> <laughs> Peterson you, you with 250 <laughs> last year you're out of time my friend let me go Oklahoma before Oklahoma runs out of time against Kansas State they got a hope that Jason White Mark Clayton can hook up now if they do get through this game with Kansas State they've got a tough schedule Oklahoma State the next week they got A&M who's 23rd in the AP poll then they got to go follow it up with Nebraska so they can't become overconfident they got to get through today and hang in there but one of those teams we're ready to go here in the second half. Both teams have had to make some adjustments. Kansas State obviously has played a solid football game against this number two club that they were given virtually no chance against coming into this game. But both secondaries have really struggled covering the long bombs that have been thrown by opposing quarterbacks. Yeah, Bob Stoops, when he was talking to Jim Gray on his way out, was talking about some of the adjustments. And the big one is just lining up properly. They just haven't been able to figure out where Dylan Myers going with the ball a lot. For Oklahoma. Sproles is back at the goal line to Carlo Ready on the kickoff here. Second half is underway, and that's a shot along the ground that goes out of bounds at the 20 with the flag down. So that'll be good field position. And let's check in with Jim Gray down on the field. Jim. Kerry, thank you. As you know, Bill Snyder is a man of very few words. I asked him what he liked about the first half. He said, well, I like the fact that we stopped their running game pretty well because that's a very good running back, referring to Peterson. I asked him what he disliked. He said, we're down 17 to 14. We've got to do a better job. I told our guys, if we play hard in the second half, this could be our week. By and large, he was pretty pleased with what he saw. Gary? Yeah, uh, Jim and I, that's pretty much to summing the point. it up. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right to the point. 16 years of coaching college football here. You have a pretty good idea of what you got to do, and he does. Well, and he mentioned to us that his team was in a fragile state of mind, and I think still a little bit of concern. He said, can we play with passion for 60 minutes? Well, they got 30 to go. Kansas State's got the football to start it out. Meyer looking deep as he faked the run. He gets leveled, and the pass will be incomplete at the 30, and he's going to get up slowly, and Dan Cody again, the man who moved in and took him down. Dan Cody, a guy who every now and then he will just take over a game. He has great speed. He's a relentless pursuit guy. 
He looks like Adonis. He's 6'5", almost 270 pounds. And this time, just did not, the left tackle did not finish the play. And ticks, uh, if he puts that shot on the right shoulder of Dylan Meyer, Dylan Meyer, who's already favoring that right shoulder, would have probably had to go out of the game. Meyer's completed only two of his last seven attempts. Second down to 10, ball at the 35-yard line. Out of the shotgun as they have run a lot of their offense today. The Wildcats throwing from his 25 over the middle, completed the 40 and fumble. And I think Oklahoma's got it back. Yep. He had it, lost it, and Oklahoma's got the football. Reaching in was Lawrence Domfear, and coming up with a football, Domfear heading off excited. Didn't start, wasn't on uh, any of the charts, and he makes a big play. Well, you get a little zone blitz this time, and it's a good read. Watch Dan Cody back out at the defensive end spot, and Casey just sets down right in the zone. A good read by Dylan Meyer. He just does not lock it away. Coming from the inside is Rufus Alexander. That's his third forced fumble in two games. He had one against Texas. This is his second here today. But that's not much of a forced fumble. That ball's got to be locked away by Casey. 13 fumbles on the year for the Wildcats, and eight have been recovered by the opponents. Good field position, first and 10. Straight up the middle, Peterson the 30. And he's taken down inside the 30-yard line. 13-yard gain. That's his biggest gain on a single effort. Let's take a look at our Pack Life game summary. Well, 13 yards will up this number quite a bit. This from the first half. 26 for Peterson. And look at the averages. Under two yards per carry. Both of these defenses obviously focused on these two players. Oklahoma's got a chance now to strike early here in this second half. Jason White. Their Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback. Peterson is in the backfield. Lone setback. Three receivers left side. They run that way. Peterson chased back. 35 gets around it. And up and over for a gain. Maybe of a couple of yards. Simmons has been on him from that linebacker position and made a hit. Who hits whom? Is it the running back or the linebacker? This guy runs right at you. Yeah, the running back won that one. And Marvin Simmons is no slouch. But that is unbelievable power for a 19-year-old. They keep giving him the football. And a second down and seven ball at the 25-yard line. Oklahoma up by three out of the shotgun. Jason White, three receivers near side. Peterson on the carry trying to find that hole a little for maybe a couple of yards and again Marvin Simmons moved in with a tackle and one of the big problems for Kansas State we had Brian Casey with the fumble you mentioned earlier Gary that their special teams have been terrible and this defense has had to defend a short field all year they give up just over 300 yards per game but a lot of that has to do because the offenses they're playing don't have to go very far another big third down at the 23 yard line Oklahoma's got a third and five they are three for seven in third down conversions. Kewan Jones has come on. He had a good end of the second half and running number 20 in the backfield now. He'll roll into the middle. White looking over the middle, and that is incomplete. And good pass coverage, just avoiding any flag on that. It's all down on the incomplete as Moses was the intended. And Byron Gavin has come out on, off the bench to cover. And this. Bob Elliott is learning a lot about his defense right now. They were put on a very short field and come out to force a DiCarlo field goal is a major victory for the Wildcats to start the second half. This is going to be a 40 yard field goal attempt. DiCarlo doing the kicking and it's blocked. Kansas State blocks it. It'll roll back to the three yard line five and down at the seven yard line as Tetuan moved in and got a hand on it and so they do not convert and an unhappy head coach no! 40 yard attempt is blocked watch the jump this is just an unbelievable play by Scott Edmonds to jump through. The guard was lazy in his technique coming down to block him. You've got to close this up. Actually, excuse me, it's the tackle, and that's a senior, Wes Sims. He has to come down and get shoulder to shoulder with Joseph, and Edmonds, a very athletic 260 pound, steps right over the top and gets the block. 
and pick the football up. It is now a first and ten, but the ball is at the nine yard line in Oklahoma way offside, and they'll whistle it right there. Damn fear on the center defense. Well, regardless of the outcome, Bob Stoops is going to yell a lot in films this week. I mean, a lot. Prior to the snap, offside, number 74 on the defense. There Five is just penalty, still first down. For a team fighting to prove that they may be the number one team in the country, they look sloppy. Got an update on our officials, Jim. Uh, Tom Quick has come off the bench. The replacement here will now be the line judge. Mike Liner, who was the line judge, is now the field judge. Hugh Douglas is the referee. And John Laurie, our referee who started today, has a pulled muscle and is done for the day. Gary? All right, first down and five here. That'll be a first down up to about the 20 yard line. Rolls on the carry. We need to go back a bit on that block punt. Why pick that ball up and try and no, return you, it? No, that was dumb. No, you have to wave it off. Because you would have had the ball on the 23. You, you, you wave it off. Instead, they had the ball on the nine yard line. And Rufus Alexander is down on the field. He has had a big day starting in his fifth consecutive game after he did not start the game one of the season. And that's something, going back to what you were talking about, you work on constantly on special teams. Any time a kick is blocked and goes beyond the line of scrimmage, just run away from it. They've been able to move it back out. We'll check the injury when we come back. Bob Stoops looking out and wondering what is going on here as Oklahoma team had a chance on that last drive and then the blocked kick Kansas State just will not give in here. Uh, Kansas State is finding a couple of guys Scott Edmonds being one who had a, a sensational game last week against the Jayhawks and that's what Coach Snyder's talked about. They need a couple of leaders to step up and make some plays. Alexander walked off on strength. Allen has come on to replace him. Meyer turns to the near side at the 20 and uh, not much on that. Helmet goes flying. It was a first down and 10. No gain as the tackle made by Ingram. Clint Ingram came on and uh, took him down. Well, and Lawrence Dampier, who came in, remember 68 Carl Pendleton went out. That's the second time his helmet has popped off. They're going to didn't expect to play very much today with Pendleton and Lynn Magruder working in the middle there, but uh, maybe he hasn't buckled up his chin strap yet. You see what the defense has done today, Oklahoma. First three, they gave up the two TDs. Since then, they have shut it down. It's a second down and 10. Ball at the 20 yard line. Dylan Meyer over the middle. First down up to the 30. And to the 33 yard line. Herrera again on the reception, a 13 yard gain. What an excellent job by Dylan Meyer recognizing a hot read. This guy, Lance Mitchell, is going to be unblocked. The receiver's going to run a slant. This is just perfect execution. If they're going to blitz one more than you can block, you've got to get it away. And you notice a little throw release. It, as a quarterback, you don't have to look pretty. Just get it to the guy who's going to be open because he's going where the blitzer came from. Great read. Herrera's got his third reception. He had 41 yards in the first half. A first and 10 ball at the 33 yard line. Handoff scrolls trying to find a little running room, and there's not much there. No gain as Dan Cody, who's had a lot of tackles in this game, gets another one. Cody's well, been very strong up front. Well, and here's if you're Bill Snyder, you should be getting some word from upstairs from Del Miller and Greg Peterson saying, listen, the backside end is crashing, and Dylan Meyer, who can run, fake a toss, fake a handoff, get yourself a naked boot, drag a tight end, you might end up with a big play. So Cody over there, 6'5", 265 pound senior. Meyer back in the shotgun. A second down and a 10 from the 33 yard line. They fake the fullback draw and go over the middle. That'll be intercepted at the 50 yard line. No. Waiting for a call. No. Oh, yeah. Incomplete. Yep. That back ball judge. hit the carpet. The back judge had to come up and make the call. Poole thought he might have had an interception on that, and the argument being made over there by Stoops. And this was good defense. Dylan Meyer, his receiver got knocked off of his route. College football, you, there is no five-yard rule. As long as the defender is equal to or in front of the wide receiver, he can make contact. And there was contact made. Ronnie Poole definitely looked like he trapped that. You can always see this is that uh, field turf. Ooh-wee, that looks like an INT, my friend. Pretty good argument there for the interception. And, and not only that, but how in the world can the back judge see that? Third down and 10, and there go the flags. Let's see who moved first. Might have been John Doty, the left tackle for Kansas State. Boy, that looked like an INT, didn't it? Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. That was close. 
prior to the snap. Ball start. Number 71 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Let's check in with Jim Gray and Alexander who left the game. Jim. Gary's got his hands in his head over on the sideline. He's been attended to by the trainers. Uh, it does not appear that he is going to return as of now. They're holding him out. Looked like he wanted to return. Gave the indication. Put his mouthpiece back in and the trainers are now holding him back. All right. That's number 42 right there. Rufus Alexander the sophomore. Linebacker for the Sooners. Third down and 15. For the ball at the 28 yard line. Meyer looking over the middle of slant and caught 40. And up for the first down. That's Tony Madison. Madison's had some big catches today. A 16 yard gain. One more than they needed. You have to make tackles. You're in third and 15. This if, if Dante Nicholson makes this tackle. Excuse me. That's Eric Bassey. And then Dante Nicholson came from the outside. If he make this tackle the punting unit comes out. It's just a quick slant. You've got it. Bo Pelini earlier. Jim Gray heard him talking to the guys about just being in position. This Oklahoma team is just not in position today. It'll be a first and 10 ball at the 44 yard line. Kansas State has it there under the shotgun. Myers over the middle and that is going to be incomplete. He went right back to Madison but he could not hang on and we'll check in with John. See how big that point after turns out to be. <laughs> yeah. Second down and 10 ball at the 44 yard line. Three straight incomplete passes on first downs have been thrown. Meyer again moving up and he needs a timeout. Didn't like what he saw and couldn't get the change made in time so did not want to pick up the penalty. Oklahoma leading at 17 14 but Kansas State's got the football. Oh I'm sorry I was given the card now here's our Nissan drive summer Gary. Thank you very much Ed. <laughs> Seven plays 35 yards taken 220 Kansas State. They've got the football with a second down and 10 ball at the 44 yard line. Lynn Meyer back out of that shotgun again. Five back six back on the coverage going over the middle two receivers open that's caught at the 35 no incomplete. Oh. Thought he was going to hang on it. could not. Herrera again. Yeah. You've got to make this play. This ball put right on the money. Marrera, he gets hit as he as he right as he catches it but this ball needs to be caught if Kansas State you get the feeling that if they can just make one or two more of these plays they could start to get a lot more momentum I think the momentum clearly on their side that's a nice hit by Dante Nicholson but this ball needs to be snagged those are the big plays that change a football game Boy, I, I tell you what I'm not so convinced that that's not a fumble I thought and so. a recovery it looked like he had both feet firmly on the ground and still had possession of the ball. Four out of eight on third down, but only one out of their last five. Kansas State, third and 10, 44 yard line. Looking, and that's going to be overthrown oh, and incomplete. Boy. He tried to draw a defensive hole by hanging onto the pants of the defender. Well, it looked to me like Anya Nagetcha got him. <laughs> I mean, it really did. <laughs> No flag. There is no flag. Our, our little flag dropped down because we all expected. Uh, they, they're saying uncatchable, but uh, when somebody's draped all over you, it's kind of hard to get to the ball. That is uncatchable. You can't disagree with that. <laughs> yes. It's just the reason why, why <laughs> is the issue. All right, it'll be Jesse Martinez coming on to do the punting. He's had one punt, 44 yards. He and uh, Tim Ray are both punted today for Kansas State. This is going to bounce. Mm, that Came close to hitting yes, an Oklahoma did. player, but it went the other way. So Oklahoma will take over first and ten. Pretty decent field position on a 29-yard punt. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan. Everything we touch, we shift, and everything we shift, we try to make better. And the Home Depot, you can do it. We can help. Great to have you with us. Manhattan, Kansas is the site. And a team here at Kansas State not given much of a chance of being in this football game against number two Oklahoma is making a race of it with 959 left to go here in the third over 50,000 on hand that cutting in Jim Gray I'm Gary Thorne great to have you with us Jones in a receiver first and 10 ball at the 27 out of the shotgun white looking for him intercepted gonna take this one in Brandon Archer touchdown.
sixth interception the Wildcats have had this year. Archer takes that one back for the touchdown. A 28 yard return. Extra point and Kansas State with a huge turnover by Oklahoma has taken the lead back. Joe Rim puts it through the uprights. White's pass was on but it was a purple uniform that got it his first career TD. Brandon Archer celebrating his first career touchdown on the interception. 28 yard return. Both teams now have seven points off turnovers. Well now the slap on the back that Brandon Archer gets as he gets to go back out and play defense again. This is becoming kind of fun for Kansas State in this home environment. There are the turnovers that have been forced. Oklahoma will get the football back as that's kicked over towards the 10 yard line taken at the 11. Bradley's got it. Bradley no room outside inside tough effort. He gained an extra seven yards right there. A 15 yard return. This is all about not seeing the linebacker at the second level if you're Jason White. Well, it'll be back momentarily. We lost one of our tape machines, but as Brandon Archer went to drop back out, Jason White just flat didn't see him. Yep. And Jim Gray was just telling us from the sideline, he said, you know, I've been doing these interviews for a long time. And remember Bob Stoop said, we just don't have the discipline. They don't have anything today. Look at this team. Kansas State's got over 50,000 on their feet and roaring here with 946 to go in the third quarter. Oklahoma's got the first football first down and at 10. Jason White, they start at the 25-yard line. Peterson, and boy, he's fired up. Peterson takes it to the 40, and he's all the way up to the 42-yard line before Cedric Williams can bring him down. And there was an extra jolt from their 19-year-old running back who gets 14. And so many people are drawing comparisons between this young man and Eric Dickerson. And it's all has everything to do with kind of that upright. And you think that guys should... You know, most guys get down a little bit, their shoulders down. Dickerson did it so many years ago so well, and Adrian Peterson were there a little more upright as they go to the line of scrimmage. He is fourth in the nation with 154 yards rushing per game and 13 in all-purpose yards, and he's only 19. Jason White to the flats near side, 45 up to the 46-yard line, Brandon Jones. Well, let's go all the way in the wayback machine. Watch as Eric Dickerson, right when he hits the hole, watch the angle of his spine. Actually, you didn't slow it down, but as he gets to the line of scrimmage, watch the spine angle. As both of them get through the hole, it's unbelievable that they look so similar in the angle of their spine. Their pads are not down. Stand upright and run right through you. Second down and four, Oklahoma. You square everybody in, Peterson on the carry, and you can just sense the extra charge as this battle is on. Kevin Huntley, a two-yard gain. Peterson is running with the best leg charge we've seen yes. in the game, and now Kansas State's defense is going to be asked to ratchet it up one more level. And if I was Bob Stoops, I would talk right now to Chuck Long, my offensive coordinator, and Kevin Wilson, my run game coordinator, and say, run it again. It's, this is message time. If I'm Bob Stoops, I'm not happy with the way my guys have played today. And let's just load up 28 and see if Kansas State can stop it. He had 26 yards in the first half. Peterson has already gained 33 here in the second. Three for eight, third down. Third down and two. Looking the flat pass, first down. Into the 40, 35, and down inside the 30. J.D. Runnels out of the fullback position. The junior has a 24-yard gain. Remember yeah. last week, the fullback we saw from Oklahoma State? What's going on in Oklahoma? Sean Willis and J.D. Runnels, two of the best fullbacks in the country. And this is a good job by Bubba Moses, the tight end. He locks up and finishes the play. The coaches pointed him out as well. He's blocking two guys. And Runnels just gets up behind big old Bubba, picks up another 10 yards. It is the eighth different receiver that Jason White has thrown to in this game. First down to 10, ball at the 29. Kansas State on top, Oklahoma driving. Peterson the carry, and he runs into the front line and the linebackers, and about everybody else. Barry put the first hit on, gain of a yard for Peterson. It'll bring up a second down and nine. Let's check in with Jim Graves downstairs. Jim. Hey, Gary, you and Ed were just talking about the Eric Dickerson comparison with Peterson. 
Peterson when Eric Dickerson set that record back in 1984 wasn't even born when he set the single season rushing record in the National Football League but I talked to him about it and he said he admires Eric from the films and you know what he's from a little town Eric Dickerson Sealy Texas not too far away from Palestine Texas maybe something in the water out there he's got to grow him big and strong a little flat pass again at the 30 yard line on a second and 10 and take it out of bounds at the 24 mark Clayton of five yard game it, it is almost eerie to, to kind of stay with the Adrian Peterson Eric Dickerson it is almost eerie how much they look similar running the ball we looked at a bunch of different clips and it just looked so and the only thing that would make him look more like it is if he got the Rex Specs and the Jerry curl <laughs> then it would be complete the best start by a running back in Oklahoma history and there have been some pretty good running backs in Oklahoma history but in the first five games he's been phenomenal Third down and four. Big third down play right here. Ball at the 23 yard line. Shotgun fake. Want to run the fullback draw. And shy of the first down at the 21. Jones gained two. They needed four. And Bob Stoops is going to go for it. I can just sense by their sideline, and I don't blame him one bit. This has been unacceptable for the number two team in the country and a team that I thought was really the number one team in the country. Today's performance has been unacceptable, and I think this is the right call at the right time by Bob Stoops. Now, Kansas State needs to take a risk. Big blitz here. You're thinking run. I would still blitz and see if you can't get a negative yardage play. They are six for six in fourth down conversions. This is their first attempt in this game. A fourth down and two ball at the 21 yard line. Fourth down. White looking wants to go to the near side they're seven for seven first down at the 15 yard line they went for it they got it Brandon Jones hauled it in from white it's either the third or the fourth time that on a short yardage third or fourth down that they Oklahoma has run the slant the exact same play and this is against Cedric Williams who usually plays more up towards the line of scrimmage he needs to be right here this is the harder throw make him throw the fade. This is an easy pitch and catch for guys who've been working together for four and five years. They get the first down. First and ten. Ball at the 15-yard line. Oklahoma driving. Peterson on the carry. Oh, is he met? Wow, what a heads-up tackle right there by Tierras. George Tierras put a big hit on right there. Stood him up, and then everybody else joined in to take him down. Again, it goes back to a bunch of purple shirts unblocked at the line of scrimmage. We've seen what Peterson can do when you pick up the first level. You've seen it. He gets to that second and third level, and it's lights out. But if this, if you don't block these guys at the point of attack, forget about it. Nobody can run against them. Oh, George held them that time. It brings up a second down and 11. Loss of a yard on the play on the spot. Again, out of the shotgun. Jason White, three receivers to the left side, fakes the draw, goes to the flats, wide open at the 10, to the 5, and touchdown! Mark Clinton, the TD and a 15-yarder. If you don't come to balance and get the weight of your body over your feet as you go to make a tackle, Mark Clayton makes you look goofy every single time. It's a special, special player. This is a guy that when he gets to the next level, they will do the same thing that Chuck Long has done. Find ways to get him the ball as quick as possible. You don't need to run. He's fast enough to run deep, but keep him around the line of scrimmage. That is his 29th career touchdown. As we said, he averages about one a game. That kick is up, and it is good. So they put it through as DiCarlo puts it in, and the seesaw battle continues here as Oklahoma gets back up on top. And they don't even have a chance to do this if Bob Stoops doesn't do a message to the team on that fourth and two and go for it instead of kicking the tray to Carlo. I mean, common sense tells you five, you know, getting towards five minutes of third quarter, you stop, you kick a field goal down there. But I, I think it's an, an excellent, excellent mental call and a message to his team. And maybe that's the, finally the alarm may be going off for Oklahoma. Clayton out of Arlington, Texas. He was in the final three for the Bolitnikoff Award last year for college receivers and in all likelihood is going to be there and maybe take it home this year. Yeah, and Arlington, Texas is in the running to maybe build the new Dallas Cowboys Stadium and I'm sure there's some fans in and around the Dallas area that like to see number nine out there with Keyshawn and all of those great receivers. This guy is just so good after the catch. Great drive right there. Ten plays, 74 yards. Took four and a half minutes. 
And they had that big fourth down conversion Ed was talking about, and they are back on top. 24-21. And you know, Jason White, we were speaking to him on the phone middle of the week, and, and he, I asked about Mark Clayton. He said, you know, guys, I really don't have words to describe it. He said, but the thing that nobody gets to see is how hard he prepares himself every single week. How I mean, he's got natural ability. Everybody knows that. But he said it's just no one outworks him on the entire team. And you, I can't tell you how much that's going to serve that young man when he's playing on Sundays. Well, White has done his part. He's put the football there today with those three touchdown passes. Kickoff rolls us back in the end zone, and there he will down it with 525 left to go here in the third. And a good one underway here. I want to remind you there's a lot more to come. Don't miss the second half of ABC's college football doubleheader. Most of you are going to see Missouri take on Texas. Others will see Ohio State, Iowa, North Carolina State, Maryland, or Arizona State, USC. Check the local listings for the games in your area. That's a trapper there at the end, Gary. Arizona State at USC. Andrew Walter, if you had to rank senior quarterbacks, I think he's right up there with Kyle Orton. And we already saw what yeah. a good quarterback can do against a depleted Trojan secondary. Well, the battle goes on. We have 525 left to go here in the third. And again, Myers running out of time on the clock. Two, one, and he just gets that snap off. Big charge by Oklahoma. And he just throws it away on the sideline as again he got leveled. Both of these quarterbacks have taken some pretty good hits in this game. Lance Mitchell that time getting in for the Sooners. And both of these guys have injuries that are stacking up. Of course, Dylan Meyer, we talked about his shoulder. Jason White. He's been put to sleep longer than he's been awake, I think, in the yeah. last year and a half. He's had a couple of ACLs. He had a scope during the offseason. Meyer now three of his last 11 in the air. Oklahoma shutting down what had been a strong uh, passing game for Kansas State. Second and 10 from the 20. Meyer again getting chased out of the pocket, and he's taken down back of the seven yard line. Dante Nicholson. Moving back from a safety position to throw him for a 12 yard loss. Well, this is a position that they call Roy. And there is no secret to why they call it Roy, because there was a guy named Roy Williams that used to play that position. It's almost like having a street named after you. I think I'd rather have a position named after me. That street had no traffic right there. <laughs> yeah. And Dante Nicholson has done a great job just his second year. He was a Juco guy last year, the Big 12 defensive newcomer of the year doing a nice job pretending to be number 31 Oof. nice job on the sack right there it'll bring up a third down and long yardage 22 they'll go sprawls running he's got some room one man to beat he gets up to the 19 yard line couldn't quite turn the corner Wow, a 12-yard gain. Let's check in again with Jim. Hey, guys, part of the problem down here with Meyer and the reason he's getting clobbered back there is because the snap on the uh, time clock is coming at one or second or, or at zero. So there is no anticipation for the defensive line. They don't have to guess. They know exactly when to go. <laughs> well, and that's part of the problem. The coaches yesterday were talking about Dylan. He's got control at the line of scrimmage. I think for a young guy, he audibles a little too much and changes his protection. And, Jim, you're exactly right. He's... They know it's going to be snapped, but also the offensive line is going to be a little hesitant. Rayer now comes in to do the punting as he and Martinez keep switching off. Fair catch called for and will be taken at the 48-yard line by Rankins. A 33-yard punt. A couple of TDs so far here in the third. As we figure out what got us to 24-21, of course, Brandon Archer with his first career interception. Jason White just did not see him. And then Bob Stoops. I think made the absolute right call. They went for it on fourth down, got it, and then Mark Clayton, forget it. If you do not gang tackle this guy out in the flat, he's going to make somebody miss and make a big play out of it. Kansas State has had Sproles with a one-yard run. Figures has picked up a 38-yard uh, reception for a touchdown. Will Travis Wilson has had two TDs. Trey DiCarlo a field goal. The other points, an offensive game. First down and 10, ball at the 47. White fakes. In the pocket over the middle, and that's almost intercepted at the 35-yard line. That's incomplete. Uh, John, in that game for the lead. Second down and 10, ball at the 47-yard line. Little split to the near side. They run Peterson wide. All kinds of blockers. Linebacker through. Can't make the first tackle, but they drive him out of bounds. A four-yard gain. Thrifty Car Rental post-game report. That'll be coming up, time permitting. 
We'll have the scores and highlights from all across the country. And boy, some interesting games going on, including this one. Yeah, there's so many good freshman running backs. Hart at Michigan, although he's a redshirt freshman. Adrian Peterson. And if you have not seen Danny Ware at the University of Georgia, I mean, other than a bruised lung, or that's the only thing that slowed him down. He runs awfully hard for a true freshman as well. Another big third down. Oklahoma's four for ten third down conversions. Jones number 20 has come back in. White has gone to him in the flats. Two receivers near side. Jones blocking this time. White over the middle, and that one's going to be incomplete. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Cedric Williams again, their senior, who presses moving up from that safety position, was there on the coverage. So the defense of Kansas State holds. Well, they're getting to where they have 45 minutes of playing with passion, which is what Bill Snyder said has not happened this year. This is a team that, even though they're not young, they're inexperienced. A lot of these guys backed up some of the great players from that Big 12 championship game. But this has been a really good effort by Bob Elliott's defense. This is the first three and out for Oklahoma since their second possession. This punt will come from the 40-yard line and taken on the fair catch at the 16. Figures back there that'll be a 33-yard punt. And Kansas State takes it back. Tonight, Wally Lundy and the Virginia Cavaliers try and continue their undefeated run and stay atop the ACC. Perennial Conference champion Florida State, the Seminoles, will be the opposition. ESPN's coverage at 745 Eastern. And the amazing job that Al Groh has done at Virginia in recruiting. Wally Lundy, who's a great back, fumbles last week against Clemson. Yeah, that's all right. We'll put in the backup Alvin Pierman. He runs for 104 yards in the second half. That's We'll be fine. First down and 10, ball at the 16 yard line. Kansas State got to go about the distance of the field here. Working out of that shotgun again. Meyer over the middle. That'll be caught, and the immediate tackle made at the 24 yard line. Tony Madison, an eight yard reception. Onion, I got you. Moves in to put the hit on. And the coaches talk about Dylan Meyer, and, and you know, for a young guy. He manages the game so well. And, and I think if you looked at this game on the grand scheme, I think this game, if it shrinks, if it gets shorter, which means you run the play clock down, not as ridiculous as Jim mentioned that you're snapping at zero, but control the clock a little bit when you have the ball, I think this really favors Kansas State. A second down and two, and they're in a distinct passing formation with five receivers. Here's the blitz from the corner. Got it to 25, 30, spun back. Looking to midfield at the 40, trying to get the midfield, won't get there, but a fine run. Marrera, 21 yards. What's he trying to do? Copy Mark Clayton? Yes. Good vision. You know, most guys want to try to fight for the sideline, but the big numbers, yards after catch, are always back towards the middle of the field, especially against a very fast defense. That's a very sure tackle, Brodney, tackler Brodney Poole that he runs by. And what did he pick up? 16, 17 yards after Brodney Poole played two hand touch. He's had a 475, averaging 18. A first down, first and 10, 46 yard line. Myers back again, avoids one tackler and just throws it into oh. the carpet. And said he was down. That said he was oh, down. No. They're calling it a loss, a sack on the play by Dan Cody who has played spectacularly today up front for the Sooners. It didn't look like to me that Dylan Myers knee had hit the ground as he went to throw this away. He does a nice job of avoiding Cody is just he's got such good stabs with his hands. He changes the angle. Good, good call. call. Wow. Right on the money. Boy, these guys have made a couple of really nice calls in this game. It's easy for us with the <laughs> yeah. replay. It's not easy for them. It is a nine yard loss. Keep in mind uh, we've had the referee had to come out of the game with a minor injury. So the officials have had to shuffle. Screen pass oh. near side drop. Oh, that's gonna, that's gonna go for that's gonna go for long yardage. Madison had that one red uh, right, and you can see he's going, oh man, I had nothing but daylight. Yeah. A great call. Again, Bill Snyder calls his own plays. He has a couple of coordinators in Dell Miller or Greg Peterson, but everything goes through Bill Snyder. And this was an offense he developed for many, many years. That's going to bring up a third down, long yardage, third and 18 after that sack with a ball at the 37-yard line, Kansas State trailing. I, I think take a shot. You know, they tried a couple of hitch and goes earlier. It's going to take cab fare to get this first down anyway. So you might as well. 
No, nope, timeout. Mm -hmm. And for the second time here in the second half, Kansas State has had to use a timeout after Myers came out and took a look and didn't like what he saw and wanted to come over and talk about it. So it'll be a third down and 18, a minute 29 left to go here in the third with a 24-21 lead on the board for Oklahoma. There's a little too much of this, I think. That, you know, Jim Jim had a great observation down on the field that, that the ball was being snapped at two or one seconds left on the play clock. And there's just too much talking and, and let's move around and they give him complete control of the line of scrimmage. But at some point it's like you just got to run the play. You can't burn timeouts, illegal procedures, and he's putting his offensive line. You know what? Another add on to that keeping offensive linemen in their stance for that long mm -hmm. is not good for pass protection either because they get stiff and then they have to kick slide against guys like Dan Cody. That's not advantageous to the offense as well. Well, well this great uh, tradition. This is a series that goes back to 1908 continues here today as Oklahoma leads it 66 wins they have had in their series but Kansas State has won six out of the last nine including the Big 12 championship game that they upset Oklahoma in last year and now they're trying to upset them again here in this uh, regular season conference game of the Big 12. I still think you can take a shot here. Safeties are only at about oh just oh they're under 10 yards now they're creeping up. Third down and eight ball at uh, 18 rather third and 18 ball at the 37 again calling out instructions two receivers on the right side keeps one in the backfield over the middle wide open midfield it will not be enough for the first down Davin Dennis the junior wide receiver hit by Bassey <laughs> and Bill Snyder took a nice saunter down the sideline to see where this was and I like the call coach. Go oh, after. Oh no, he's sending his punters. Up. Boy, he there was a hesitation for a moment. Gain if, of 15 if, on it. If this was fourth and a yard and a half instead of fourth and two and a half, I think he goes for it. Nice throw by Dylan Meyer. Now, having missed it, do you fake the punt with Martinez back there? I like the call. Fourth down and three. Martinez standing back at his own 40-yard line. And he was, and he fumbled it. And Oklahoma's got it in great field position in Kansas oh. State territory. And again, a big, yeah, big toss-up right there as Berdine came on and recovered it. Well, and special teams all year long. Darren Sproles has been benched as the punt returner. He took his eye off it. He's looking at the rush. That is such a huge mistake. They use two punters here. Tim Ryer, who's a true freshman, and Jesse Martinez, who's a junior college transfer. And Meyer, believe it or not, is two freshmen, the more consistent performer. And that time, Martinez took his eye right off the ball. And another huge foul up on special teams. is uh, You just get a feeling it's going to be very costly. He may have been thinking about doing something besides punting. Maybe. And uh, look to see what was going on. First and ten, White. Back on the field, the Oklahoma offense. Peterson on the carry and again gets hit after a gain of three. Try to go off that left tackle position that time and not a lot of running room. Well, if you're Kansas State playing on the short field once again defensively, you better go get an extra mouthpiece because you're going to get a boatload full of number 28 right now. Peterson, time possession. They want to keep the football. Oklahoma's got the 24-21 lead, and Peterson, if he can carry, he can eat up some time. They're going to let the clock run out here in the third quarter. And number two, Oklahoma hanging on. Kansas State making a surprising game of it as they are down just 24 21. That's the end of the third quarter. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The over 50,000 here in Manhattan, Kansas, hoping that their Wildcats can stage a great fourth quarter and another upset of the number two Oklahoma Sooners. Delighted to have you with us as we go to the fourth. Oklahoma's up 24 21, but it has not been easy for either team. Oklahoma with a football. White going out into the flats, and that is dropped. An incomplete pass. Brandon Jones trying to turn it upfield before he had it. 52,310, the announced attendance in a sellout crowd here today. And we're we just get counted in that. Do the announcers get counted in that? We do not get counted in that. No, no. We're always left out. We're fans of a sort, but not for either team, just for a good game. Well, Bob Elliott now, the defensive coordinator. 
He hasn't been bringing a lot of pressure. He's got pretty good pressure from his defensive ends, but I think he might want to disguise something, bring it off the corner. Jason White has been just so efficient on third down. You've got to change up his rhythm. Four, four for 11. Third down conversions. White back at midfield looking. He's going to throw the Hail Mary down the left side at the 10, and that ball is incomplete. What a battle right there. Travis Wilson has had two touchdown passes, was the intended receiver. But Maurice Porter and Junior stayed right with him. And you know, these officials have done a really nice job today. This is a great no call. If two guys are going to be playing with each other arm and arm down the that's a just you don't make the call. Again, here comes the pressure by Bob Elliott. He rushes two more. Great job by the offensive line early, but Bubba Moses has got to do a better job in that tight end spot. But see the two guys with the arms? I think it's a good no call. If they're going to be arm in arm like that, whose fault is it? Who knows? Don't throw a flag. Punt will come from the 45 yard line. DeCarlo back there. Fair catch is being called for. They let it go, and it does go into the end zone. And almost tripping <laughs> Ferguson uh, on the kick, rather. And Mark Bradley was back there trying to down that ball. So, Kansas State gets it back. 24 21, number two, Oklahoma on top. Kansas State will start first and 10. They've got the ball at their own 20 yard line. And that will be brought up maybe to the 22. Flags are down all over the place here. Now well, let's see what the call was. Uh, Dan Cody got a little jumpy. He's had a nice game, and uh, he bases his entire pass rush is based on speed. And a guy that's this good coming off the edge, you're going to give him a little leeway. A defensive line coach that I used to play with when I was with the Cardinals, who said you get two a game. Upside on the defense, number 80, five-yard penalty. Still first down. And I think this might be his second of the game, so he's out. But when <laughs> guys are playing like this, you don't really want to slow them down. He just, he has, it's not just the speed, but he has the unbelievable ability. And this time he drops in coverage and in on the play causing the fumble. But he has the unbelievable ability to cut his angle down towards the quarterback or towards the running back. It's not just the speed, it's his body lean as well. He's had a big game. First down and five after the penalty. First uh, penalty that we have had this half. Ball at the 25-yard line. Flat pass near side. 25-yard line. Dances away and gets up to the 28, maybe the 29. Three-yard gain. Marrera again on the carry. Give him four on that one. And right now, Wildcats need is a sustained drive. Keep possession of that ball. Get themselves into scoring. Uh, you know, he made a play a couple of uh, two series ago where he got towards the middle of the field and I made the joke about what does he think he's Mark Clayton he's a young guy true sophomore I promise you he's been taking a knee as soon as they make their adjustments and watching Oklahoma play because young guys can learn from people like Mark Clayton how to make people miss how to read where the defense is coming from that one is straight ahead on a second down and one they get two and that'll be enough for the first down Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select our Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each of the university's general scholarship funds. 1000 bucks each? Not each. just spread up? Nope. Everybody gets 1000 Meyer's gone 18 for 34, 236 yards. White's 18 for 29, 230 yards. It has been a passing game by two teams expected mm -hmm. to run the ball. First down and 10, ball at the 31-yard line. Kansas State's got it in their own territory, trailing here in the fourth. Hand off, up the middle, little it's spin to it's pick up maybe a yard, but looks like he's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Larry Burdine, who's come on to have a strong last couple of football games, moved in on the hit. And Lynn Magruder got, got this play started in the backfield. He's Bob Stoops said that he played as well as any defensive tackle at Oklahoma since he's been here. And there's some pretty big names. That's just good upfield rush, even though he doesn't make the tackle. It makes Sproles have to get out of his way and not have any momentum towards the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. Fire again out of that shotgun at the 30, the reception to the 35. And it'll be well shy of the first down. Marrera again on the reception, who had his breakout game a couple of games ago. And a six yard gain, but four shy of the first down. Well, his nickname's Juice, and I think we're starting to see why. He can really shake when he gets out there. And it's very quick. It, it, as his shoulders are shaking, his feet are still moving up the field. This guy's got a very bright future ahead of him. 85 yards, averaging 14 a reception. Another big third down. Third down, four ball at the 37 yard line. Kansas State needs to keep possession here. 
With 12.30 to go in this fourth, big rush put on over the middle. Interception, no! <laughs> Dropped at the last second as Poole had it, lost it, had it, and lost it. <laughs> I think I got it. I think I got it. I don't got it. A little bit of a dangerous throw that time by Dylan Meyer. Again, all-out pressure coming, man coverage. And if, if he doesn't float that, that's going to be a toss and a catch. Oh, you know, I think he might have been trying to get up and celebrate. I, I don't know why this looks like he's got it the whole way. Oh, that's that's a shame. He thought he did. Yep. Fourth down and four. Punt coming from the 25-yard line. It'll be taken back at the 30 by Rankins, and Rankins flags down. Will be hit and taken down right there. Yeah, you're going to get probably an illegal block in the back. And look at this. Kansas State's defense might actually have good field position to defend. 33-yard kick, just a three-yard return, and it may get moved further back. It will uh, as the Sooners commit what could be a big penalty in this game. And Bob Elliott, the defensive coordinator for Kansas During the State. During return, illegal block in the back. Number one, 15, 10-yard penalty, first down. Bob Elliott's up here. A couple booths down from us going, are you kidding me? I get to defend almost the entire field? Ouch. We've got a finish for you here. 24-21 with Oklahoma. And Kansas State going at it. A battle in the Big 12. Oklahoma heavily favored to win their portion of the Big 12 in their division. While Kansas State can get back in it. They are 0-2 in Big 12 play. And Jason White has been 12 for 12 on scoring drives. They've tried to get Adrian Peterson going. It hasn't worked. Maybe it's time to just let your Heisman Trophy winner take over. First and 10, 22-yard line. That's what he's doing here. Rolling out offside. Tackle made at the 21-yard line. And let's check in. All right, John, keeping us updated on games that are starting to finish up. It'll be a second down and 12, two-yard loss on that last play. Kevin Huntley made the tackle. They'll go to their fullback, just pounding as Jones will pick up five. But it'll be third down and long yardage. Kewan Jones on the carry. Jones, a guy who two years ago set the OU freshman rushing touchdown record with 14 and smaller guy 5'9", 200, but he's just one of those guys who has that combination of speed and power. Now, he's going to be obviously out in the flat. Jason White, third downs coming into today, 59% for Oklahoma. It just has not been the case. This is a third down and a seven. Oklahoma, two receivers off to that right side. Uh, see what they can do with it out of the shotgun. White looking. White deep up near midfield. It's caught and taken out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Mark Bradley, a senior wide receiver for Oklahoma and a big first down. Well, this is a layered route to, towards the sideline. And the guy who's underneath is Mark Clayton. So Williams, the corner, has to get stuck in between because you, we all know you cannot leave number nine much space. And Jason White does a nice job with his eyes looking towards Clayton and then having Bradley over the top and the safety has to play over the top. That's just a great layered route call by Chuck Long. For those of you watching that Notre Dame game, we welcome you here. First down and 10, ball at the 43. This has been a conqueror of the football game. Carried by Peterson up to midfield and that's where he'll be downed as Simmons who's been with him the whole game is there to make the tackle a seven yard gain 10 37 to go in the fourth 24 21 Oklahoma you know this is one of those fields with all the uh, tire rubber in it he dragged Marvin Simmons and you can see it it's like where a car spun out from the 47 yard line to the 51 yard it looks like a car swerved and ran into an abutment over there. Skid marks. <laughs> it's unbelievable this kid's power. Second down and three ball at the 50-yard line. Oklahoma looking for that first down. They want possession. They've got the lead. Peterson again. He'll get the first down and will take it deep into Kansas State territory. He's had some great blocking going on out in front of him as well in this game as they've been rushing that right side out there and you get him around the corner and he is tough to bring down. Very quickly he's gone into the Heisman talk and it's interesting because Jason White he's got a vote. I don't think I'd ever vote for myself and uh, you know, if we keep winning and Adrian keeps on playing like he's uh, playing and keep improving every week like he has been. Oh, he'd definitely be on the top of my list. Well, he's got 
88 yards in this game on 25 carries. That last one, 15, his longest of the game. First and 10, ball at the 35 yard line. The pitch back on the reverse. Bradley, Bradley, 40. Bradley trying to find a little room with a lot of crackbacks going on. <laughs> Jason White. Wow. <laughs> he just knocked out Travis Wilson. The problem is Travis Wilson plays for Oklahoma. <laughs> Pretty good block in your old man right there. A gain of two after all of that. Jason White, you know, he got a little caught up. He's supposed to come back and help block. But as he goes down, he just tattoos Travis Wilson. Game down to crunch time here with 9.55 to go. Oklahoma trying to keep possession here and sustain the drives. They've got a second down and seven on the spot. Ball at the 32-yard line of Kansas State. White, the Heisman winner at quarterback for Oklahoma. And uh, the give is deep, trying to send some blockers out. Not going to get there. Peterson trying to turn the corner will have a gain of one. And those people who are just joining us, this is kind of what it's been all day for Adrian Peterson. Early in a drive, it appears, wow, he might break some big ones and he's going to get to, you know, the 20 and 30 yard carries that he had against Texas. And about second or third down in every drive, it's Kansas State. They end up with an extra man in the box and good pursuit, and they make him run laterally. And I don't care how talented he is, running laterally, he's not going to get it done. And now he's just going to be a decoy on third and six. So the, Kansas State can bring some pressure. He's the fourth leading rush in the nation coming into this game third down and six and they give it to Peterson on the draw and Peterson on the extra wow. effort will get the first down Peterson just lunged forward after he had two tacklers down low on him Adrian Peterson won his teammates over during the summer he came up from Palestine Texas he spent the entire summer working out with the guys and, and trust me Oklahoma does not mess around during the summer they work as hard as anybody and all of the players and, and this guy missed a week and a half of camp because he separated his shoulder so they didn't, really didn't know what kind of a gamer he was but they knew how fast and strong he was and he always does that he just always finishes the run he was the big 12 offensive player of the game last week they're going to measure for the first down and they got it. So Peterson able to pick it up. He's had five 100 yard or more rushing games in the five that he's played in his career. There's the total yardage. You look at the rushing game. Oklahoma finally has got it going. Mm -hmm. All of the offense for Kansas State has been in the air. Yeah. And Darren Sproles has been really in the second half not used at all. They haven't gotten him any screens and credit the Oklahoma defense. They've read the screens very well, but Darren Sproles has just been a non-factor in the second half. First down and a 10 ball at the 25 yard line. Peterson will get the big fullback set up in front of him to try and open the hole. We're getting charged. Look at him keep going three times. He'll get another first down takes it up to about the 13 yard line. A gain of 13 on the carry. And he's now gone over 100 yards, six consecutive games. That's a pretty good start to a career. That's all he's played. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's setting that watermark awfully high, but you just get a sense the way he runs. And it's just unbelievable to watch how he finishes runs. You know, you go back to Maurice Claret a few years ago as a true freshman at Ohio State. This guy's a better player than Maurice Claret was the year Ohio State won the national championship. Number two team, Oklahoma. Or maybe the number one runner in the nation their 10th play on this drive will be taken up for a two yard gain and the clock keeps running Peterson again on the carry 8 12 left to go here in the fourth and this drive has quieted obviously this Kansas State crowd because Wildcats can't get the ball back and I was just mentioning Maurice Claret of course without Claret Ohio State does not win the national championship and in this type of game you start to see that maybe without this guy Oklahoma wouldn't be able to win the national championship gets the pitch and it stays in bounds over there to keep the clock going Peterson on the carry he picked up a couple on that and numerically I just said that I thought Adrian Peterson was better numerically a little bit better nothing but the difference I think the flat out speed of Adrian Peterson I think Claret's a very good inside runner but I think Adrian Peterson and right here on third down you could even throw a boss because he might be the fastest guy at Oklahoma Peterson is going out of the ball game on a third down and four with the ball spotted at the eight yard line third and four at the eight yeah, this is Jason White time here they bring Jones back into the backfield and a timeout will be taken. Peterson has carried the ball seven times for 56 yards on this 
drive. White leading the charge. 7-11 left to go in the fourth. Manley during that drive with Peterson. But now I, the slant has been the pass in this down and distance that Jason White has loved. They need to set inside hard corners for Kansas State. This is going to be a third down and four. Ball spotted at the eight-yard line out of the shotgun. Jason White back looking. Receivers near side into the end zone. Complete touchdown! He's done it again, and Mark Clayton, his favorite target, takes it for an eight-yard TD with 7.06 to go here in the fourth. Yeah, Mark Clayton's kind of a security blanket, isn't he? Mm. He gets open, and Jason, he catches the football. Jason White plays Linus. Mark Clayton plays the blanket. He's just always there. He just and, and these guys have been working together for so long. We're on the scout team together years ago. Their timing is impeccable. Big touchdown drive right there. Extra point. They'll go after it here. The Carlo on the kick. It is up and uh, it is good. So Oklahoma takes the 31 to 21 lead Clayton on the reception 12 plays 78 yards they ate up five minutes 12 seconds and ended on this catch in the end zone. Trophy winner 20 for 31 one interception more importantly four touchdown passes Clayton the last two one for 15 and one for eight and that throw so oh so very close to being tipped by the two linebackers who are in the way but Clayton finding the back they had two kind of that layered route system again it's just so hard to defend them putting the pressure long. oops on Kansas State and that one is going to go out of bounds at about the 28 yard line on the kickoff let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary well you got Peterson Peterson and more Peterson he got going 56 yards total rushing and you started to see just some of the power. Bob Elliott, the defensive coordinator, we were talking to him yesterday, just said he's such an aggressive runner. He just runs right at you. And then the throw right over the thing. I mean, if, they, if those guys would have let their fingernails grow out, I don't think that would have been a touchdown. First down and 10. Kansas State now, knowing they've got to go to the air, Oklahoma backing up. As they've got seven back pass coverage, no rush put on here. Aaron Meyer moving out near side, little flip, taken up to the 35-36 yard line. It'll be a gain of one. Marrera on the reception, but nowhere to go deep. Well, Don Meyer, that was supposed to be a screen. And so when the Oklahoma white shirts, I believe the receiver for Kansas State is injured as he went over to the sideline. Marrera was the receiver. And it is, uh, I believe, Marrera down on the sideline by his own bench. But as he, as Dylan Meyer rolled out and looked deep, Yaman Figures was blocking downfield because he thought it was going to be a screen. But just a nice job by Oklahoma sniffing that out. And that's something, if you're going to play Kansas State, well, let's hope that Marrera is okay because both him and Figures have really started to grow up recently and become big-time targets for Dylan Meyer. Legruder and Mitchell put the big hits on and bent him over backwards. He gets back up and limping a little bit on the ankle. It may have gotten turned over there in that tackle as he ended up on his back. It'll be a second down and nine. One yard gain ball at the 36 yard line. Kansas State with it in their own territory. Sprawls the man in motion in the backfield out of the shotgun. And Myers looking, lobs one, and that will be incomplete. No chance for figures on that one. And again. Well, they brought Darren Sproles in motion. And Dylan Meyer, th this is unfair because Darren Sproles, all 5'7, 180 pounds, is trying to block a defensive end. There's a rule. And in, in, in the NFL, this would never happen. You, uh, the, the rule in the NFL is always big on big. That's just not fair to ask Darren Sproles to try to block Jonathan Jackson, who was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week last week. You have to put big bodies on big bodies. So the quarterback is down for the Wildcats. Dylan Meyer, the sophomore quarterback, going to the bench, clearly woozy as he came out of there. And Alan Webb, 6'3", 205-pound sophomore, will come on. 
at quarterback. Well, big rush by Oklahoma, and he tosses the screen complete up to the 39 yard line. It'll be a gain of three as Poole moves in and puts the hit on. And Webb mm -hmm. called on here to try and move this team, but it's fourth down. Well, and Alan Webb had to start last week against Kansas and just wasn't wasn't very effective. And Dylan Meyer begged his way onto the field and got in. And they pretty much went all the chances for Kansas State. Dylan Meyer has played a great game against very heavy pressure. I just don't think they're going to be able to come back 10 down with six to go. Tim Rare from the 35-yard line, a high kick, fair catch called for, surrounded by purple. So you better make it, and indeed Rankins does. And Oklahoma will get the first football on a first down and 10. And they are up by 10, 31-21. Tonight, ABC, 50th anniversary season of the wonderful world of Disney. It'll start at 8, 7 Central. World premiere movie, Growing Pains. The return of the Seavers featuring Kirk Cameron, Tracy Gold, Alan Thick, all the Growing Pains cast. Then at 10, an encore presentation of Sunday's episode of Desperate Housewives, the season's highest rated new show. Isn't that redundant? I thought it was. Well, Oklahoma right now, it's a matter of hanging on to the football with 6-11 left to go. The number two team in the nation gets the first down and 10. Ball at the 27-yard line. See Peterson trying to put up some numbers as he'll be trying to hold on to that ball. It'll be a four-yard gain there. For those of you just joining us, we welcome you. Number two, Oklahoma leading at 31-21. They've had to come from behind twice in this game against Kansas State here on Kansas State's home field in Manhattan. Oklahoma Sooners, they were upset last year in the Big 12 championship game by this K-State team, but they have battled back here in the second half to take that 31-21 lead. They had the lead at the half by a field goal and have added to it. Second down and six. At a quarterback, carry the football up to about the 33-yard line, and they're just going to try and run this. It'll be a gain of two. Kansas State's got to get the football back, and Peterson's the man they'll have to stop to do it. They have done a nice job, Kansas State is, of at least containing Adrian Peterson. It wasn't until the drive before this that he really got going at 56 yards of his 118 on the day on that one drive. But you've got to think, even on third and four, that you still may see Adrian Peterson, although Jason White you can kind of trust a little bit on third and four as well. Peterson has made himself a Heisman Trophy candidate, only 19 years old, a true freshman, playing with Jason White, the Heisman Trophy winner last year, who is his quarterback right there, White to Peterson. One Heisman Trophy winner to another, okay, question no. mark there. <laughs> Ball up to the 39-yard line, Peterson gains five so he's uh, up over 120 yards now on carries you know we earlier in the show we did a little comparison between Adrian Peterson and Eric Dickerson and the, a guy who runs upright like that the key is high knees and the feet just keep chugging it's amazing when you see him run into a pile that pile just always seems to kind of move forward and the first thing that you and I noticed you know you watch a guy on TV but you see him on perp on in person other than, you know, the 300-pound offensive lineman, he's as big as anybody on the field. Enormous. Yeah. He looks gigantic out there, and it's going to look larger if you're staring at him from the other side. First down and 10, ball at the 39. Football, Peterson, and that's recovered by Oklahoma. That would have been interesting with 4.06 to go. He got stripped yes. of the football. Well, let's take a look again. We showed this earlier, but let's stop it right when they get to the hole. Watch the spine angle of both of these players as they get there. Most guys are kind of leaning forward, but it's almost the exact same angle as they get to the line of scrimmage. But it's the high knees and finishing the run that both of these guys, you see the left hand going down by Peterson. He just does things that you don't expect a 19-year-old to do. Out of Palestine, Texas, the 19-year-old Big 12 Player of the Week offensively last week. Second down, 13. Peterson being asked to carry this football, and he'll uh, take it up over the 42-yard line before Simmons hits him. That is a five-yard gain. We welcome all of you joining us as Kansas State. A gallant effort in this football game against number two Oklahoma with Ed Cunningham and Jim Gray. I'm Gary Thorne as Kansas State got the early lead in this game. Seven nothing 14 seven Oklahoma came back to take the field goal lead going into the second half and they've added to it. They lead by 10 now. 
And if you just join Dylan Meyer the quarterback for Kansas State knocked out of the game Alan Webb will take over if they can stop here and that severely limits what Kansas State can do offensively third down and eight Peterson on the carry carrying uh, half of his and most of Kansas State's defense with him he gets another four yards and I think it is just that reason that you can be conservative offensively if you're Oklahoma Oklahoma because you know Dylan Meyer who had really played a sensational game under a lot of pressure 20 of 38 242 yards and a touchdown out got hit so hard by Jonathan Jackson on the last drive knowing that now Kansas State's going to be limited offensively there's no reason for you to do anything other than just run Peterson for the rest of the ball game and they're letting that clock run as we close in on the two minute mark there is the starting quarterback for the Wildcats Myers on the sideline and certainly looks like that's where he is going to stay after he was injured on the last series. They're going to take the five yard penalty here. Uh, nope they take the time out as the clock ticks down and let's check in with Jim Gray Jim. Gary as you just mentioned Dylan Myers on the bench he is basically through for the day he has been talking to both of the trainers and the doctors uh, they won't confirm it because they won't confirm injuries but some of the other players down here have, have said that he has a concussion or they are, are fearful that he has some sort of concussion he's very woozy he keeps trying to open his eyes and focus in on some stuff and uh, he's just not able to do it they say he is OK however that it is not a major physical problem but they're going to keep him out of the game Gary. Yeah, you could see him when he walked off. He was punch drunk, no doubt about it. And, you know, schematically, I think it's a bad idea to ever have a running back block a defensive end unless it's some kind of rollout and you're going to cut him. But Darren Sproles, all five foot seven hundred eighty pounds, was given the task of blocking Jonathan Jackson. From my days in the NFL, there was a hard, fast rule: you put big bodies on big bodies, no questions asked. I don't care how kind of cute you want to get with motion and everything else you let the big boys block the big boys and let the running backs pick up the linebackers minute 49 left to go let's take a look at today's Chevrolet players of the game Adrian Peterson Oklahoma how many times is that going to be repeated not only as our Chevrolet players of the game here in ABC but in the conference as the player of the week and Dylan Myers with a great effort for Kansas State at quarterback in recognition Chevrolet makes a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund fourth down and four the kick coming from the 35 yard line and it is a boomer handled back at the five goes. and taken down at about the two yard line figures gets hit by Mark Bradley a 49 yard punt and no return well, Darren Sproles not in there returning kicks the senior because he's had a couple of muffs and that time the young returner needs to know you plant your heels on the 10 yard line this is just figures you can't go back to the three yard line especially on a punt that hung it wasn't like that was a, a flat kick that ball had plenty of hang time Boy, has Bradley done a great job on coverage mm -hmm. we want to remind you coming up second half of ABC's college football doubleheader most will see Missouri Texas others it'll be Ohio State Iowa North Carolina State Maryland or Arizona State USC all there's, there's the team to watch Arizona friend. State absolutely you circled that they play good defense too. First and ten from the four. Gonna we'll try the Hail Mary down the middle, and it'll be incomplete at the 35 yard line. Dante Nicholson back on the coverage. Flags down. Go. Personal foul on Allen Webb. The quarterback being hit. He got leveled in the yeah, end zone. Did. Boy, that was really close to a beautiful throw. Dante Nicholson, if he Rupping doesn't. The passer. Number 10 on the defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's Lance Mitchell the senior linebacker who got called on that hit for the penalty. So Oklahoma looking to extend their record to six and oh. This is their first real road game and they uh, passed the test but it has not been easy. Third roughing the passer penalty that we have had today. Oklahoma. The BCS polls coming out would love to move into that number one spot given a chance. Again, looking for the long bomb and a first and ten from the 19. That'll be thrown incomplete. Down to a minute 27 left to go in this game. Oklahoma having wins over Texas and Texas Tech in their last two games. In the conference, they are going to go three and oh in the Big 12. And for Kansas State. 
It has been a very tough start with the losses at Texas A&M and then the upset. They were upset at Kansas. And uh, they're going to lose their third. But I, I think that the Kansas State coaches learned a lot today. Uh, the special teams are just horrendous. They're just going to have to get better. That'll be a sack back at the 11-yard line. Nowhere to go. And Dan Cody has been spectacular today for Oklahoma moves in on that. Kansas, which is a more difficult test than in years past. Mark Mangino doing a fantastic job. And, of course, he has some knowledge about Oklahoma because he used to coach there with Bob Stoops. But I think the one that just jumps off the screen at Oklahoma State, Vernon Morenci. I mean, we've seen a great running back today. I'm, I'm not convinced that Morenci's not the best running back in the country at this point. That'll be incomplete. And, again, shot taken. Larry Verdine moved in. Verdine's become an outstanding rusher. For this Sooner defense, he put the hit on. It'll bring up a fourth down and 18, with under a minute left to play. And Kansas State, despite an effort that, as you say, the coaches have got to find some positives in, will not be able to overcome Oklahoma. Well, and, and going to that Oklahoma State game, and not overlooking the Jayhawks because they're playing much better than they have in years past. But I think Oklahoma State presents the biggest matchup problem for Oklahoma. Remember, Dusty Dvorak off the team. Lawrence Pendleton was hurt today. We're, we don't know how bad. We don't know how long he may be out. But that rotation at to tackle, very thin for Oklahoma. And as they go to play at Stillwater, they can grind it out and wear you down. That'll be down by Kansas State with 40 seconds left to go. A 61-yard punt on the roll. And Oklahoma will uh, take over. And today, White has gone 20 for 31 at quarterback, 256 yards. He's thrown for four touchdowns with one interception. You see Kansas State had the early lead. Oklahoma came back to tie it. The field goal differential at the half in Oklahoma's favor. And then Oklahoma has been able to get the big touchdowns, passes to Clayton and White with the four TDs thrown here in this game. Best play in all of football. Perfect execution. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> Especially if you're the number two team in the country and you, you got scared right down to your boots by Kansas. They did that. So they will let the clock tick here. We're down to uh, 29 seconds left to go. And uh, Oklahoma will remain uh, perfect as they will be 6 and 0 oh on the season. And the second half, it really, it was from about the middle of the third quarter, they started looking like a top two or three team because they just slept walk through the first half. They had misalignments in their secondary. They had missed blocks at the point of attack. Peterson didn't get going until really the fourth quarter. So take the win, but there's a lot to learn from this ballgame for Oklahoma. Peterson ends up with 130 yards on 36 carries in this game today for the 19 year old that's going to do it Kansas State at home the loser Oklahoma wins it our final score 31 21 ABC Sports online at ABC.com keyword ABC Sports stay tuned part two ABC's college football doubleheader coming up next for Rod Cunningham Jim Gray and all of our crew thanks very much for joining us a lot more football to come from Kansas I'm Gary Thorne catch you later